Hey readers, I am here today to bring another audiobook out of the vault. I am giving you guys access to Twisters and Textbooks, which is another one of those stories that is only available now on YouTube. I've unpublished the original version um, from everywhere. You can't get the ebook or the print or the audiobook anywhere else but here, so that's kind of fun. Um, I had so much fun writing Twisters and Textbooks. I really loved the tornado aspect of it, and I had a lot of fun. Uh, researching tornadoes and storms and writing about them and the action and adventure of those scenes. So that was a lot of fun for me to write. Um, if I've since, like I said, unpublished it and I have rewritten the story a little bit and re-released it as Match Me Again as part of the No Match for Love series. Made it a little bit longer, but this original version is still a lot of fun and I think you guys are gonna enjoy listening to it. So make sure you subscribe to my channel like and comment on this video so that I can make more audiobooks available to you guys and I really hope you enjoy listening. Happy listening guys! Twisters and Textbooks Sunset Plains Romance Book 2 Written by Lindsay Armstrong. Narrated by Stacy Glomboski. Chapter One. Today would have been an excellent day to call in sick to work. What were the odds that, out of all the rookie reporters at Tulsa One, Lauren would end up covering the state science competition. She held her smile for the last shot, grasping the microphone so tightly her hand ached as she stared straight into the camera and fought the urge to run. Where was a good tornado to chase when she needed one? Her tailored suit jacket stuck to her back, the heat already stifling in May, despite the air conditioner working overtime. The muggy convention center ballroom overflowed with laughing teenagers and their proud parents. Individual conversations pulled at her concentration, and she fought to block them out. Lauren Reynolds, Tulsa One News, didn't notice those things, even if plain old Lauren did. Beside her, a teenage boy with shaggy brown hair shifted from foot to foot, threatening to blow her concentration more than the entire crowd combined. A first-place trophy hid most of his torso, and a lopsided grin revealed metal braces with fluorescent blue bands. But it wasn't his constant fidgeting that distracted her. It was how much he reminded her of another boy, who'd worn an almost identical smile after winning his own senior year. Lauren felt her breathing quicken at the memory, and she fought to keep her brow from creasing as the camera continued to roll, she wouldn't let being here get to her. This would be the best human interest piece the station had ever seen. If she wanted so much as a prayer of landing the roving reporter spot next year, she needed to impress her boss, Doyle. And cut, Shannon said from behind the camera, her voice rough and raspy. The red light underneath the lens blinked off, and she lowered the heavy equipment from where it rested on one shoulder. Lauren let the microphone drop. Finally, she could escape this dark pit of unwelcome memories. She turned to the boy, extending a hand, even though she wanted to run. It wasn't his fault he reminded her of someone else. Congratulations again, she said. The spot should air on the 10 o'clock news tonight. Thank you. He shifted his trophy to one hand, then gave hers a firm shake. The action was so completely Tanner that it had her heart slamming against her ribcage. Lauren had been so proud of his win, and still in shock that such a funny, intelligent senior had chosen her, a mere sophomore, as his girlfriend. Life had seemed perfect, and she'd never so much as considered that they might not be together forever. Then her parents had died their car picked up and thrown into a tree by a tornado. And Lauren's entire world came crashing down around her, a world Tanner had forcibly tried to repair, creating a fissure in their relationship wider than the Grand Canyon. 
The boy raced over to parents who enveloped him in a hug. Even his walk reminded her of Tanner, a little unsure and clumsy, like someone who had grown too fast and wasn't used to his new body. Guilt coated her tongue, thick and bitter. This was exactly why she hadn't wanted to return to Oklahoma. She'd spent the majority of the last four years trying to forget Tanner, but today was bringing it all back. Why hadn't another news station in Tornado Alley, any station, offered her a job? After graduating from the University of Washington last month, she'd had two offers to choose from, potentially covering the tornadoes she loved chasing in Tulsa or the police beat in Boise, Idaho. Like that had even been a real choice. You did great, Shannon said. Thanks. Lauren shoved her microphone in the duffel bag of equipment, more than ready to get out of here. Her entire body hummed with the need to chase a storm. The dark clouds when they'd entered the conference center had looked promising. At least it's not a slice of bread toasted to look like Woody Guthrie like last week, right? Shannon said. This piece should turn out half decent. Lauren nodded. She lifted her hair off her neck, desperate for a breeze, while Shannon lovingly packed up her camera. Could she possibly move any slower? Lauren jealously eyed Shannon's frayed boyfriend shorts, white tank, and frizzy auburn hair pulled back in a messy bun. Shannon looked cool and refreshed, whereas Lauren knew she was sporting more than a healthy glisten. She'd forgotten how hot Oklahoma summers could be. Maybe she should have become a professional storm chaser instead of a journalist. No one had cared what she wore during her summers working with the crew, but she'd always planned on being a news reporter, and her parents had enthusiastically supported that goal. Despite abandoning every other reminder of her past, Lauren had stubbornly clung to that tenuous connection, her anchor in the midst of the hurricane. Shannon finally zipped the tote bag closed and slung it over her shoulder. Lauren quickly picked up her own bag and wove through the crowd, desperate to get out of this building. Tanner had kissed her breathless in that alcove. She'd held his hand as they walked through those doors. Each of the sweet memories had been tainted by their last three weeks together, and the shame that had clung to her like a shadow for four years. Lauren burst through the doors, immediately feeling her muscles relax. She peered up at the sky, but no funnel cloud was in sight, and no sirens wailed a warning. Just an overcast sky that barely even hinted at rain. Didn't Tulsa know that she hadn't moved back for clear skies? Shannon exited the building and raised an eyebrow, the door swinging shut behind her. Where's the fire? Huh? Lauren raised an eyebrow, pretending to be confused. Hey, Doyle said a thunderstorm's supposed to hit tonight. Maybe the station will let us tag along for practice. Okay, Shannon said easily. She popped open the back of the van, and they both placed their bags inside. I'll ask Doyle when we get back, Lauren said. If they were really lucky, a funnel would form, and they'd catch the vortex on camera. Maybe chasing another storm would help her forget, if only for a moment, that she was only 60 minutes away from Sunset Plains. Was Tanner still there, or had he gone to Texas A&M without her? If he would have just listened to her desperate pleas, instead of trying to fix everything. Lauren climbed into the passenger seat of the van, eager to get back to the station. She pulled out her cell phone and scrolled through her emails while Shannon cursed her way through the afternoon rush hour traffic. Lauren deleted a few emails containing coupons she wouldn't use before opening the Daily Digest from the Sunset Plains Chronicle. She'd subscribed shortly after leaving, and getting news from her hometown was one of the highlights of her day. A photo appeared at the top of the email with a link. Lauren sucked in a breath, as a familiar face stared up at her, along with the headline, Obituary for Dana Olson. What had happened? Mrs. Olson couldn't have been more than 50. She'd been Lauren's favorite high school teacher and her mother's best friend. 
Lauren could still see the neat all-caps handwriting filling the whiteboard as Mrs. Olson lectured on weather systems. Could still hear her clear voice singing Amazing Grace with the church choir at Lauren's parents' funeral. Lauren clicked on the link with shaking fingers and quickly scanned the article. Breast cancer. They hadn't caught it until it was too late. Tears filled her eyes and she blinked, forcing them back. Hey, is everything okay? Shannon asked. The smell of coffee and cigarettes sharpened as the static-filled singing from the radio came back into focus. Lauren quickly swiped underneath her eyes, avoiding Shannon's gaze. One of my high school teachers passed away yesterday. Wow, I'm so sorry. Were the two of you close? I guess so. She and my mom were best friends, and Mrs. Olson always encouraged me to pursue meteorology. In fact, when the principal refused to allow Lauren, still only a sophomore, into the honors earth science class, Mrs. Olson had argued until Lauren was granted special permission to take it early. It was there she'd connected with Tanner over their mutual love of the subject. I got a few emails from her after my parents' funeral, but I never took the time to email her back. Lauren had felt so broken. In a matter of weeks, she had lost both her parents and graduated from high school. The only thing she'd known to do was run. I'm so sorry. Lauren locked the screen and shoved her phone back in her purse. I'm fine. I haven't seen her in years. She hadn't meant to brush Mrs. Olson off, but everything had been so raw and painful. By the time Lauren resurfaced for air, three years had passed, and it seemed ridiculous to get back in touch with anyone from her old life. Are you going to attend the funeral? Sunset Plains isn't far from here. Lauren chewed on her lip the pull toward home like a physical yank. Going back for the funeral of someone she hadn't spoken to in almost four years was ridiculous. Do you think I should go? Lauren asked. It makes sense. You'd want to say goodbye. Lauren ached to see the pinks and golds of a sunset brush the tall grasses of her family home, longed to watch the lightning bugs flicker in the trees. But shame for her abrupt departure had kept her away. Could she face another funeral? And what if she ran into Tanner? She had no idea if he still lived in Sunset Plains. But the possibility, combined with painful memories of her parents, had always been enough to keep her away. Mrs. Olson is gone. She won't know if I'm there or not, Lauren said. Shannon glanced over, one eyebrow raised. Yeah? But that's not really the point, is it? I'm just not sure now's a good time. Sounds like you don't want to go home. Of course I want to go back. Lauren just hadn't been brave enough to follow through. After her parents' deaths, every inch of that town had brimmed with raw memories. Tanner had insisted they should stick to the plan and stay there through the summer, then leave for Texas. All her pleadings had fallen on deaf ears. Then go. Don't you think your mom would want you to? Lauren's mind immediately filled with an image of two gleaming caskets poised on taut green belts above gaping holes. She hadn't returned to the cemetery since the funeral. Did anyone take flowers to their graves, or did they stand empty and alone? The shame of guilt had hung heavy on her shoulders for that indiscretion. Mrs. Olson had probably taken flowers. What about work? Lauren asked. Shannon rolled her eyes. We work four days a week. Yeah, but what if a story... No one's going to begrudge you attending a funeral. It's one day. Maybe visiting Sunset Plains could be cleansing, like a summer thunderstorm. Tanner probably wasn't even there. A town of 4,000 didn't exactly boast many jobs for meteorologists. Word would slowly get back to him that she had returned, perhaps paving the way for her to eventually apologize for the pain she'd caused them both. Home. In four years, she hadn't spent time 
anywhere that deserved that title. Home. A chance to finally say goodbye. Sunset Plains was calling her back. Chapter Two Of all the places Tanner had wanted to spend his first day back in Sunset Plains, a funeral home was at the absolute bottom of his list. He shoved his hands in his pockets, running a finger over the divots of his new key as he followed his parents and sister across the gravel parking lot. He'd barely pulled into town an hour ago, and the moving truck still sat full in the driveway of his newly purchased house. Not house, he reminded himself. Home. Four years was long enough to be away from the town he loved. He couldn't wait for next week, when he'd start teaching meteorology at the satellite campus for OU. The campus was small, only one building with perhaps 20 classrooms. It served five or six nearby towns in addition to Sunset Plains, but it had a brand new weather center, which would be perfect for his Ph.D. coursework. We won't stay long, Mama said. Just enough time to pay our respects to the family. Cassidy caught Tanner's eye and smirked, just like she had a thousand times when they were growing up. Despite being two years apart in age, they'd always been close. It was because of Cassidy that he'd first noticed Lauren. The two girls had been in the same grade and pretty friendly with each other. He hoped Lauren was okay, that she'd found the peace she so desperately sought. Even after four years, he still worried about her. We won't get out of here in under an hour, Cassidy whispered so only Tanner could hear. But the words were full of a fondness for their town. Viewings were social events in Sunset Plains. It was part of what small-town living was all about, and part of what he missed while away. But did it have to be tonight? He'd be pushing it to get the moving truck unloaded and returned by the 8 a.m. cutoff time tomorrow. Tanner frowned, guilt making his stomach clench. Mrs. Olson was dead, and he was worried about a late fee. Why had he never sent her so much as a thank you card? in all the years since he'd graduated. She'd written him recommendation letters for both scholarships and entrance applications to half a dozen universities. But she'd also been a painful reminder of Lauren. We can stay as long as we need to, Tanner told his mom. The late fee wasn't important when it came down to it. He knew townspeople would probably show up to help after they were done with their morning chores anyway. Dad held open the front door, and Tanner followed Cassidy and his mom inside. He stopped just inside the foyer, memories flooding him at the sight of floral arrangements crammed into every inch of space. He could still remember the way Lauren had looked when she stepped through the doors, so stoic and grim. He had tried to put a comforting arm around her shoulders, but she'd shrugged him off and walked away. Something had changed in their relationship the day her parents died, and no matter how hard Tanner tried, he hadn't been able to repair what was broken. It had taken over a year for him to realize that Lauren hadn't wanted him to fix anything. One day they were posing together for graduation pictures, and the next, Lauren's cell phone had been disconnected. The only clue had been a note she'd left in his mailbox that said, Please don't try to find me. I'm sorry. For three weeks, he'd heard her insist she needed a completely new plan for her life without ever listening to her at all. He'd never dreamed those plans didn't include him. He wrapped his hand around the keys still in his pocket. It had taken over a year for him to stop being bitter about the abrupt breakup and move on. He'd attended the satellite campus in Sunset Plains for two years so he could be near Lauren delaying transferring to Texas A&M until they could attend together. He'd planned on proposing at Christmas and had even taken on an extra job to save for the ring, although he told Lauren it was to earn money for tuition. They'd been so young, but it had felt like the right decision at the time. Mama nudged Tanner aside and reached for the pen, then signed the remembrance book. Tanner blinked quickly, running a hand over his face. 
He'd accepted long ago that he would probably never see Lauren again. He'd had two serious relationships since their breakup, but the whisper of what should have been was always at the back of his mind. Sarah, a woman called from across the room, one of his parents' neighbors. Mama tugged on Dad's arm, dragging him toward the woman. You kids get in line, and we'll catch up to you in a bit, she said. Yeah, right, Cassidy said, smoothing her long blonde braid over one shoulder as her engagement ring flashed in the light. But her tone was teasing. They took their place at the back of the long line of mourners trailing into the foyer. Tanner craned his neck, trying to see into the room while doing quick calculations in his head. It would take them nearly an hour just to get through this line. The room was even more crowded with people and floral arrangements than the foyer. The crowd shifted, and he caught a glimpse of the shimmery, plum-colored casket and Mrs. Olson lying peacefully inside. I can't believe she's gone. Cassidy twisted the end of her braid around her finger, shifting from foot to foot. Me neither, he said. Mrs. Olson had been a permanent fixture of Sunset Plains, or so he'd thought. She was still so young. Just last week at church, she told me she'd finally perfected her cherry pie and couldn't wait to share it at the Fourth of July picnic. It's a crying shame we'll never get to taste that pie, the woman in front of them said. Tanner peered around Cassidy and instantly recognized the severe bun and wide smile of Mrs. Collins. Great. They really would be here all night if they started a conversation with her. But he wouldn't complain or try and rush his family out of here. Mrs. Olson didn't deserve that. I know, Cassidy let out a sigh. She promised to show me how to make her pie crusts once school let out so I could sell them at the bakery during the holidays. I guess I'll have to keep working on my own recipe now. I'm sure it will be every bit as good as Dana's was. I'll be sure to stop by and order some pie come Thanksgiving. Mrs. Collins turned her smile to Tanner. It's nice to see you back in town. It's good to be back, Tanner said. And how was it, living in Texas? Mrs. Collins asked. Not nearly as nice as living in Oklahoma. Even after four years, it had never felt like home. Tanner wasn't sure if it was the cramped housing or life as a college student, but he'd never quite fit in. Maybe it was because he'd planned on living there with Lauren. He choked back the sadness that always waited to swallow him whole. Would the ache ever completely go away? He hoped she wasn't still chasing storms. Surely in four years she'd at least moved on enough to find another outlet for her pain. The line inched forward. Mr. Olson stood beside the casket, looking solemn in a charcoal gray suit and tie. He had the same haunted look in his eyes that Lauren had at her parents' funeral. Heard you bought the Crawfords' old place, Mrs. Collins said. We're all glad you're putting down roots here. I know your mama's missed you. It's nice that it worked out so you're back in time for Cassidy's wedding. Where is Jace today, anyway? Cassidy blushed, her ears turning pink at the mention of her fiancé. Tanner didn't know him well, just that he was a famous Hollywood actor head over heels in love with Cassidy. But what Tanner did know of Jace, he liked. He went to Kentucky on some ranch business, Cassidy said. He'll be back this weekend. I still can't believe that man gave up acting for running a ranch, Mrs. Collins said. It's almost sinful for someone as talented as him not to use the gift God gave him. Tanner discreetly glanced at his watch. Why had he packed his bed frame and mattress at the back of the moving truck? He'd have to unload the entire thing to get it out, and it didn't look like that would be happening tonight. His parents had offered to let him sleep at their place, but he wanted to spend his first night back in Sunset Plains in his new home, bed or not. The line moved forward while Mrs. Collins and Cassidy chatted about wedding plans. At the front of the line, a woman with platinum blonde curls hugged Mr. Olson. The color was lighter than Lauren's, but the curls, all natural and falling in soft waves, reminded him of her. 
Tanner took a deep breath, trying to refocus. He was only thinking of her so much because the funeral home held such strong memories of their time together. Something in the woman's hair caught the light. Tanner blinked, then squinted. He could just make out blue gemstones clustered together in a clip. He'd given Lauren a similar one as a graduation present. The blue sapphires had formed a thundercloud with a diamond lightning bolt through the middle. He looked at the woman again, his heart racing. This woman was slender, like Lauren, but had more womanly curves. The gray pumps and fitted black dress looked nothing like the flowy sundresses with jean jackets she'd gravitated toward in high school. Tanner shook his head, attempting to clear it. For a year after she'd left, he'd imagined seeing Lauren everywhere he went. It was natural that ghosts of his past would haunt him for a little while now that he was back in town. Did Lauren ever think about him? Did she wish things had turned out differently? I think Jace is enjoying the break, Cassidy was saying. I'm not entirely convinced he won't return to it someday, but his heart seems to be in Oklahoma. Of course it is, Mrs. Collins said. That's where you are, dear. The woman with the clip turned, her profile just visible. Pixie nose, slightly upturned at the end. Full lips, high cheekbones. Tanner's heart clawed at his throat, and he struggled to clear his vision. The clip flashed again in the light. A lightning bolt. The blonde woman patted Mr. Olson's hand, then moved on to the casket. Being here was playing tricks on Tanner's mind. The woman stood for a moment, gazing down at Mrs. Olson, then left the line with a confident walk. She had a bounce to her step that was all too familiar. Her eyes landed on Tanner's, then widened as her jaw went slack. She caught her lip between her teeth and folded her arms in a gesture that seemed decidedly defensive, but she didn't look away. Lauren was back in Sunset Plains. Chapter Three Lauren stared across the room at Tanner, her limbs frozen stiff. So he was back in Sunset Plains, or had he never left? A bubble of hysteria threatened to burst out of her lips, and she covered her mouth with a hand. Wouldn't it be ironic if, after fighting so much about Texas A&M, he'd ended up not attending? Tanner was here. Horror coated her veins and battled with the longing welling up inside her. Back in high school, she would have run across the room, leapt into his arms, and wrapped her legs tightly around his waist as he buried his hands in her hair and kissed her breathless. She could almost hear the locker slamming shut and smell the cafeteria food. Perspiration chilled her body as her emotions, already so close to the surface, threatened to swallow her whole. She'd fought back tears all night as the memories dredged up by the funeral home overwhelmed her. And now... Tanner was here. He rubbed a hand over his slack jaw, covered in a day's worth of dark scruff, yanking her out of the past and firmly back to the present. Lauren struggled to swallow the softball that had wedged itself in her esophagus. For three years, he had been her everything. Did three unbelievably horrific weeks erase all that? Maybe if she'd stayed, they would have worked things out. What kind of person broke up with the man she loved in a note? He left me no choice, she reminded herself. He would have tried to stop me. He didn't understand. I tried to explain a dozen times. Last time she'd stood here, Tanner had stayed by her side the entire night, whispering reassurances in her ear while rubbing her back in small, soothing circles. The action was meant to be comforting, but had shattered her into a million pieces over and over again. Her parents were dead. There weren't enough words in the world to fix that. Somehow, in the three weeks between their deaths and high school graduation, Tanner had transformed from an anchor in her life to a ball and chain. He'd become so overprotective. She had started chasing tornadoes, 
desperate to feel something other than pain, to feel close to her parents. And it had created a wall of arguments between them. She didn't have the energy to climb. Tanner's constant questions and prodding had suffocated her. She hadn't needed a surrogate parent in her life. She'd needed her boyfriend. Lauren took a deep, shuddering breath, unable to look away from Tanner's intense gaze. Even from across the room, his eyes accused her. You left, they seemed to say. Who does that? But she'd wanted a fresh start, away from the pain and constant reminders, and Texas A&M hadn't been good enough. That was a life she'd planned with her parents, one filled with season football tickets and promises to visit frequently. Tanner hadn't wanted to hear it, though. He had stubbornly insisted she needed normalcy, had said grief wasn't a good reason to make life-changing decisions. He had been determined to fix the unfixable. The woman next to Tanner waved. Jealousy flared through Lauren, surprising the breath right out of her, until she recognized the trademark blonde braid slung over one shoulder. Cassidy. Of course he'd come with his family. But even if he hadn't, Lauren had no right to be jealous. She wasn't jealous. This was a good thing. Now she could finally apologize and shed the weight of guilt she'd carried for so long. Lauren returned Cassidy's wave. Tanner continued to stare at her like he'd just seen the Rocky Mountains in Sunset Plains. His suit hung loosely on a string bean frame. Shirt sleeves rolled up to his elbows and tie slightly askew. He reached up, adjusting his thick black-framed glasses. Something new since high school. It gave him a sexy professor look that had Lauren's mouth growing dry. No doubt, seeing her dredged up awful memories of their last three weeks together. She took a deep breath and then took a step forward. Tanner blinked, as though coming out of a daze. Cassidy sighed, grabbed his hand, and pulled him toward Lauren. What was going through his mind right now? Lauren kept her arms folded as she cautiously walked toward the pair, trying to read his expression. Would he yell? Give her a hug? Tell her to get out? How did she want to react? She'd always thought running into Tanner again would dredge up all the negative feelings she'd harbored for years. She hadn't expected the good feelings to still be so strong. Cassidy dropped Tanner's hand and pulled Lauren in for a hug, squeezing her tight. Lauren held on, her eyes stinging with tears. She could count on one hand the number of times she'd been hugged in the last four years. She'd had friends at college, even dated a few different guys, but she'd kept them all at arm's length. You're the last person I expected to see today. Cassidy said, pulling back. You look great. I like how you've lightened your hair. It looks good on you. Thanks, Lauren said. You're wearing the hair clip, Tanner said, his voice hoarse. Lauren reached up, running her fingers over the gemstones self-consciously. It's always been my favorite. I'm glad, he said. The words so quiet, they were almost a whisper. This calm version of Tanner was seriously unnerving. Lauren cleared her throat, focusing again on Cassidy. Congratulations on the engagement. I saw the announcement in the paper. Tanner grunted, tugging at his tie. Three months until the wedding, Cassidy said, ignoring her brother. We're getting excited. I'll bet, Lauren said. I'm sorry, Tanner interrupted. You still get the paper? Lauren gave a small nod. I never wanted to sever ties completely. Tanner loosened his tie again, pain flickering across his face. Cassidy looked back and forth between Lauren and Tanner, then cleared her throat. <clears throat> so, what brought you back to Sunset Plains, Lauren? I heard about Mrs. Olson's passing, and I came to pay my respects. Lauren's eyes welled with tears, and she quickly blinked them back. Regret welling up like a swollen river. She shouldn't have stayed away for so long. She shouldn't have left in the first place. 
But how was she supposed to know then that the guilt of leaving would be every bit as painful as staying had been? It seemed like the right thing to do. Tanner dropped his tie and folded his arms, mimicking her stance. That's what brought you back? I thought maybe you were here because it's your home. The accusation struck like a bolt of lightning, burning from the outside in. His eyes, hooded and dark behind his glasses, dared her to argue. It was, until you ran me out, Lauren said. Hot anger rose in her chest as the old emotions came flooding back. Tanner's jaw dropped. Are you serious right now? So, what have you been up to since high school? Cassidy said, shooting her brother a glare. This is not how Lauren had imagined their first meeting going. I got a double degree in meteorology and communications. I'm a reporter for Tulsa One now. Human interest stories, mostly. Wow, that's so close, Cassidy said. How long have you been back? Only about a month, Lauren said. And you're barely making time for a visit home? Tanner asked. Lauren ignored him. I'm hoping to move from human interest stories to a roving reporter position in a year or two so I can do on-the-ground coverage of storms. That's so cool, Cassidy said. You'd be great at that. I'm glad you stuck with meteorology. Mrs. Olson would be proud. Lauren blinked back the tears. Sure. She'd graduated college and found a great job completely on her own. But proud? She'd run from her problems instead of facing them. She should have kept running. Coming back to Sunset Plains was a huge mistake. The memories from the funeral had surrounded her all night, and now Tanner was adding to the tightness in her chest. Tanner's got a master's in meteorology and is working on his Ph.D., Cassidy said. He just moved back to teach at the college. Lauren flicked her eyes to Tanner. That's great. You'll make an excellent teacher. I went to Texas A&M he said. But it felt all wrong without you. Lauren's chest constricted even further, and she struggled for air. What was his end game? So you still chase storms, huh? Cassidy said. I always thought you wanted to be a weather reporter, not a roving reporter. Weather reporters stay in the studio, Lauren said. I'd rather cover storms from the ground. Yeah, I remember you were really into that right before you left, Cassidy said. Yeah, Lauren agreed, glancing at Tanner. I've spent the last four summers with storm chasers in Tornado Alley. I've gained some great experience from that. Tanner's jaw clenched, and Lauren was catapulted back to the arguments that had escalated into explosive fights in those three weeks. I bet you have all sorts of exciting stories to tell, Cassidy said. There are a few interesting ones, Lauren said. I have some awesome footage to show for it. And a few battle scars, too, probably, Tanner said, his voice lined with razor blades. Lauren couldn't breathe, as if she were in the middle of a hurricane with gale force winds. I did it for school credit. It looks great on my resume. I thought you would have been over that by now. That's not fair. Lauren angrily batted away the tears forming in her eyes. You didn't seem worried about fair when you disappeared without a word. I left a note. A cryptic one. I spent months wondering if you were alive or dead. Lauren folded her arms, unable to let the comments slide. I was 18 and had just lost my parents. You wouldn't listen to anything I said. You left me. And just like that. Her defenses died. He was right. She closed her eyes, the pain washing over her. She'd taken all of their carefully laid plans and flushed them down the toilet. But he hadn't been willing to adjust them when the unthinkable happened and her parents died. Hey, here's an idea, Cassidy said, her voice falsely bright. You should be a guest lecturer for Tanner's class. Wouldn't that be a great way to kick off the semester, Tan? It would get them excited about meteorology. Tanner continued to glare at Lauren, arms folded. 
I'm sure Lauren's very busy chasing her way to the roving reporter spot. Lauren opened her mouth to protest, but Cassidy cut her off. She won't mind inspiring young minds. The students will love it, and it'll make you a favorite teacher right from the start. It's unnecessary, Tanner said. Anger flared in Lauren. She knew she'd handled things poorly, had hurt Tanner deeply. But she'd been a child and paralyzed by the tragedy life had dealt her. She hadn't known how to handle the memories she encountered at every corner. Didn't he understand that? Of course not, because she tried to voice her concerns numerous times, and he'd brushed her off. I'll come, Lauren said through gritted teeth. Great, Cassidy said. You were wondering what to do for your second class, and this is perfect, right, Tan? Tanner sighed, pushing his glasses up the bridge of his nose. Whatever. Where and when should I be there? Lauren asked. Since Cassidy is so eager for this to happen, she can get you the information. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have a truck to unpack. But you haven't even said goodbye to Mrs. Olson, Cassidy said. It's nearly our turn. Tanner walked away without a word. As Lauren watched him disappear into the crowd, his shoulders straight and back rigid, she finally understood, at least a little, what it must have felt like to have someone walk away. Chapter 4 Tanner dropped a box on his living room floor with a thud. The last traces of moonlight poured in the large picture window to mingle with dust particles before disappearing into the artificial lighting overhead. His parents and Cassidy had dropped him off hours ago, after failing to persuade him to spend the night at the ranch. They'd promised to return as soon as the morning chores were done to help him unpack. But Tanner hadn't been able to sleep, especially with nothing but the camp cot he'd borrowed from his parents as a mattress. So at 3 a.m., he'd rolled out of bed and started moving boxes. Might as well get up and make sure he had the moving truck back on time. He couldn't believe Lauren was back in Oklahoma. Seeing her across the room had made tectonic plates collide in his heart until he couldn't think clearly. How many nights had he laid awake, planning what he'd say to her if they ever saw each other again? He'd always imagined wrapping her in a tight hug, then apologizing for how he'd handled things after her parents' passing. She'd been an 18-year-old orphan, and while leaving had devastated Tanner, he thought he finally understood why she'd done it. What he didn't understand, would never understand, is why four years later, she was still chasing tornadoes. All warm and fuzzy feelings had left when she brought up storms, and every fight they'd had on the subject exploded in Tanner's memory. He shouldn't have treated Lauren the way he had last night, but he'd been seeing red. Tanner ran a hand through his hair, breathing hard. He'd thought he was over Lauren but he hadn't acted like he was over her last night. She looked amazing, no surprise there. She'd matured from a girl to a woman over the last four years. It showed in the way her blouse hugged her body and in the business professional cut of her skirt. Her eyes had a wisdom to them now that had been absent before, and she applied her makeup in a more subtle, mature way. Even her hair had looked good, a white blonde instead of the dishwater color from high school. He wasn't sure he liked the way she made him go weak in the knees with only a glance, even after all these years. He'd moved on, and if last night was any indication, Lauren still had a lot of baggage she was clinging to. Tanner needed to apologize, both for last night and four years ago, and then put Lauren behind him once and for all. Knock, knock. Tanner straightened, swiping a hand across his sweaty brow. Cassidy stood in the doorway in ratty jeans and a paint-splattered tee, her braid hanging over one shoulder. He couldn't believe she'd coerced him into further contact with Lauren. He didn't need his little sister to help him with past relationship drama. You're here early. Tanner pulled out his cell phone. It's not even five o'clock. 
Two years running the bakery has made it impossible to sleep in, even on my day off. Cassidy held a hand to her mouth, covering a yawn. Figure you'd be up already. Mama and Dad said they'll be by in an hour or two, depending on how cooperative the cows are this morning. What can I help with? Boxes should be labeled by room. Just start bringing them in from the truck. Cassidy nodded, and Tanner followed her back outside. They spent the next 15 minutes working in companionable silence, carrying boxes inside while slowly uncovering the bigger pieces of furniture near the back of the truck. It's nice to have you back, Cassidy said. I've missed you. Tanner pulled her in for a quick side hug. I've missed you too. I can't wait for you and Jace to get to know each other better. He's such a great guy, and I think the two of you will really hit it off. I'll have to take you out to his ranch when he gets back. The new house is almost finished, and it's real nice. Tanner grabbed his water bottle from where it sat in the back of the moving truck and took a long swig. Why did you do it, Cass? She blinked up at him, her blue eyes wide and innocent. But Tanner wasn't fooled. Do what? Cassidy said. You know what I'm talking about. Last night, Lauren. He choked on the word, momentarily dizzy. He'd really blown it last night. What? You wanted me to ignore her? She was my friend, too. You didn't have to trick her into being a guest lecturer. Tanner ripped off his glove and ran a hand through his matted hair. Jeez, Cass, you know how things ended between us. Which is exactly why I did force the issue. Cassidy sighed, grabbing a box and pulling it to the edge of the truck. You need closure if you're ever going to move on. It hadn't felt like closure. It had felt like ripping bandages off wounds that were still as raw as the day Lorne created them. He'd thought they had healed, but he'd been wrong. I I've moved on, Tanner said. I don't know why I flipped out at her. You haven't had a single stable relationship since she left. That's not true. Denise and I dated for six months. You never even let us meet her. Tanner folded his arms. It's a long drive from Texas. Okay. So what about Kara? You broke up with her because she liked roller coasters. Tanner rolled his eyes. No breakup is that black and white. But Kara had been a bit of an adrenaline junkie, and it had reminded him a lot of Lauren. You're not okay, Tanner. Cassidy placed a soft hand on his arm. You need closure. What I need is for you to let me make my own choices. Forcing Lauren to spend time with me won't accomplish anything good. She wanted to come. Tanner swallowed hard, not liking the hope that burned in his heart. It's not like I expect you to get back together, Cassidy continued, effectively dousing the flame. But I do think you two have unresolved issues. I love you. I don't like watching you struggle. I know that first year was hard, but I'm fine now, really. You didn't seem fine last night. I was caught off guard. Cassidy ran a hand over her braid, smoothing it over her shoulder. You're never going to be happy until you sift the flour and take out the bad parts. I can't sit back while she teaches my class and act like nothing's happened. I don't expect you to, and I'm guessing neither does she. Cassidy placed a gentle hand on his arm. I think she wants to talk about it just as much as you. I'm not sure this is the way to do it. He pulled a hand through his hair. I, I thought I was okay, but when she mentioned storms, all the bad memories came back, and I lost it. She was 18, Tan, and going through a lot when she left. She wasn't herself. Yes, but... Cassidy held up a hand to stop him. I know. But Lauren's a good person. Don't forget that I know what it feels like to be betrayed by someone you love. And I know you can't move on and be happy until you resolve this in some way. She's right here, ready to talk. I would have killed for a conversation like that. 
Cassidy's voice caught, and Tanner instantly felt heavy with shame. He was acting like he was the only one who'd been jilted, but Cassidy had been through even more than he had. When Drew left me at the altar, when I lost the baby later that night, I thought my life was over. I let myself become so bitter and angry that I almost didn't allow Jace into my heart. I don't even want to think about where I'd be if it weren't for him. Hey. Tanner pulled his sister in for a quick hug, mussing her hair. She laughed and jerked away. I know you've been through some hard times, too. But I'm not bitter. Honest. You were certainly acting bitter again last night. Well, the whole thing was sort of sprung on me. If you allowed Lauren the chance to explain, maybe even to apologize, you could both air out your dirty laundry and put it behind you. And she needs to be a guest lecturer in my class to do all that? It gives you some common ground to start a conversation, and it's an easy and non-threatening way to open the lines of communication. Besides, I'll bet she really does have some amazing stories that your students would love to hear. Tanner sighed, adjusting his glasses. It would feel good to finally ask Lauren the questions that had been plaguing him for four years, the questions that had kept him awake at night. Okay, give me Lauren's information, and I'll send her a text. I'm assuming you got her number? Cassidy grinned and whipped out her phone. Yes. You won't regret this. Tanner was already regretting it, at least a little. Just give me the number. Cassidy rattled it off, and Tanner quickly typed it into his phone. But 5 a.m. was too early to text someone he was barely acquainted with, so he waited until the moving truck had been unloaded and the truck returned before sending her a message. Tanner. If you really don't mind talking to my class, you could come this Wednesday at 2 p.m., room 109, at the Sunset Plains campus. You could talk about your experiences with storm chasing for an hour, and the classroom is set up for audiovisual. The response was almost immediate. Had she been waiting for him to text, or just happened to have her phone nearby? Unease curled up his spine, weaving with thin strands of hope. Lauren. I'll be there. Maybe after class is over, we can talk. Chapter 5 Lauren pulled up to the cemetery, gravel crunching under her tires. Her foot shook and she slammed on the brake too hard, bringing the car to a jerky stop. With a trembling hand, she shifted the gear into park. She hadn't been to the cemetery, any cemetery, since her parents' funeral. Maybe she should have accepted Mr. Olson's invitation to the graveside service last week instead of leaving for Tulsa immediately after the funeral. At the time, she'd thought returning to the cemetery for another funeral would make things harder. But maybe it would have been the other way around, and the comforting presence of others would have helped her feel calm. Today. She'd woken up feeling strong. Since she had the day off and was already coming to Sunset Plains for Tanner's class, she'd left Tulsa early and made this detour to the cemetery. What a horrible idea. Lauren squeezed her eyes shut, but it didn't stop tears from leaking out the corners. It had been almost four years exactly, and she could still see the caskets lying side by side, flowers covering the tops. It took three tries to pull her car key out of the ignition. She stumbled twice as she made her way across the parking lot, the loose gravel shifting under her feet with each step. Her vision blurred, and all she could see was the green tent covering the open graves four years earlier, and the mourners gathered close. Tanner's arm around her shoulders. Burying her face in her own cold hands, refusing to accept his small gesture of comfort the pastor's luminescent eyes as he told her how sorry he was for her loss. Mrs. Olson singing Amazing Grace. Lauren stopped walking, her hand clutching at her chest. Too soon, her mind screamed. 
She wasn't ready to be here. But if she wasn't ready now, she never would be. Breathe, she commanded. She took a deep, shuddering breath, then forced herself forward. Though she'd never visited, the location of her parents' graves was burned into her mind. She stumbled toward the far end of the cemetery, the May sun beating at her back. A headstone in the distance rose three feet above the ground, a silent beacon among all the smaller grave markers that were flush with the grass. The location was right. It had to be theirs. Tanner had made the final selection when Lauren couldn't bring herself to, and she'd never asked to see his choice. The headstone was rounded on top, the name Reynolds etched in capital letters with her parents' names and dates below it. Lauren slowly sank to her knees, not caring that dew clung to the grass and chilled her bare legs. She placed a palm over each of her parents' names, splaying her fingers wide as tears poured down her face. I'm sorry, she whispered. The breeze whipped her words away, and she imagined them being carried to where her parents watched from heaven. I really messed things up. I couldn't handle it after you were gone. So I left Sunset Plains, alone. The breeze played with her hair, and Lauren closed her eyes and imagined it was her mother's long, soothing fingers. I didn't keep in contact with anyone, Lauren said. I just kept chasing tornadoes, hoping it would help me feel closer to the two of you. Sometimes it does. But I miss Sunset Plains. And she missed Tanner. Lauren laid a blanket over her parents' final resting place and stretched out on her back. Dew turned the blanket damp as the clouds turned gray, moving to block the sunlight. Lauren inhaled deeply, loving the hint of rain carried on the air. A storm was coming. She could feel it in the way the breeze turned from gentle to persistent, see it in the billowing cumulonimbus clouds moving steadily closer. It felt like her parents telling her everything would be okay. She closed her eyes, willingly allowing the memories to overtake her for the first time since running away. If she hadn't been so attached to Tanner, she would have been in the car with her parents when they wrecked. Sometimes she wondered if she could have saved them. Her parents knew nothing about meteorology but Lauren had been studying storms since she could read. The breeze whipped against her cheek, a soothing reminder that she couldn't change the past. Maybe she wouldn't have saved them. Maybe she would have just died, too. Nothing miraculous happened, no sudden epiphanies or messages from the grave, but as she lay there, the storm growing closer, she felt the cracks in her heart begin to heal. She'd been wrong to stay away for so long, foolish and naive and oh so young, but wrong all the same. The cemetery helped her feel close to her parents in a way no tornado ever had. Lauren's phone buzzed in her pocket, signaling it was time to go. She crawled forward, placing a light kiss over each of her parents' names before rising. She wouldn't stay away so long again. After paying her respects to Mrs. Olson, Lauren sat in the car to reapply makeup and fix her hair. Her stomach trembled with nerves, like an undertow dragging her to the ocean floor. She wasn't worried about the presentation. Four years working on a communications degree had cured her of stage fright. But how would Tanner act today? Kind? Aloof? Angry? all three, like he had at the viewing? Would he be willing to listen to her side of the story, or would he refuse to talk? She really hoped he wanted to talk. Asking her to come had to be a good sign. Lauren pulled into the half-empty parking lot and looked up at the two-story building. The campus had opened the year she started junior high school, and the whole town had been thrilled. Most of the classes offered were satellite feeds from the main campus in Norman, but by the time she'd graduated, you could earn an entire associate's degree, 
without ever leaving Sunset Plains. Tanner had earned his associate's degree there. He hadn't wanted to leave for Texas A&M without her. And then she'd left him. She fumbled with her cell, the familiar nausea of regret threatening to choke her. Twenty minutes early. Surely no students would be there yet, which meant that if she went inside right now, she and Tanner would be alone. Did she want to risk that kind of awkwardness right before her lecture? Lauren chewed on her lip and ran sweaty palms across her skirt. She could wait in her car, but what if the projector didn't work or there were connectivity issues with her laptop? Her presentation would be a total bust without the videos and photos. And she really wanted to wow Tanner and his class. Time to face the music. Lauren slung her laptop bag over one shoulder and headed inside. The building was eerily quiet, and her wedge sandals echoed loudly against the thick laminate flooring. She took slow, careful steps, trying to minimize the noise. A few classes were in session, but most of the rooms were dark and empty. Room 109. She paused a few paces away, her hand tightening on her laptop bag as nerves filled her stomach. Light glowed through the small rectangular window on the closed door. Tanner. What had made him text her? He'd seemed furious when he left the viewing. His text hadn't exactly been warm and friendly, a sure sign it was him and not Cassidy in disguise. But he had sent one, which meant he'd asked Cassidy for her new number. Lauren took a deep breath and smoothed down her blouse. Then she opened the door and walked inside. Tanner sat at a desk near the front of the room, typing away on a laptop. He looked adorable in a button-up shirt and tie, glasses slightly askew on his nose. He glanced up, his expression unreadable. At least it wasn't seething with hatred. Hey, he said. You're early. Was that a good thing or a bad thing? Lauren lifted her laptop bag. I wanted to make sure the tech didn't turn on me. Tanner rose, holding out a hand. For one crazy moment, she thought he was reaching for her, and giddy anticipation raced through her. I'll get it all set up for you, Tanner said. The laptop, <laughs> right. Thank you. Lauren withdrew the computer and handed it over. Tanner set it on his desk and opened the lid, then plugged in the cords. The projector light flipped on overhead and the screen turned blue for a moment before Lauren's desktop appeared. There you go, Tanner said. His eyes were transfixed to the image. It was a rare picture of herself that Lauren had asked someone to snap while storm chasing last summer. Her hair whipped around her face and dark thunderclouds billowed in the sky. Lauren still held a microphone in one hand, broadcasting live for a local station. Is that a recent picture? Tanner asked. I thought you said you do human interest stories. Lauren cleared her throat. I do. That was last summer in Kansas. I was storm chasing with a crew, and we'd broadcast to local stations when they'd let us. He folded his arms, and she couldn't tell if the gesture was defensive or casual. So, that's where you've been? Kansas? Lauren pulled at her blouse, nerves making her teeth ache from all the clenching. Seattle, mostly. I graduated from the University of Washington. I spent summers all over Tornado Alley, wherever the best storms were. Right. He shifted, then ran a hand through his hair. Lauren couldn't get a read on him. Was he agitated? Angry? He didn't seem accusatory like he'd been before, but he didn't exactly seem warm and friendly either. His eyes were filled with a challenge Lauren wasn't sure she was ready to answer. Wow, Seattle. You really did want to go somewhere far away. Lauren blinked back the tears stinging her eyes. I tried to tell you so many times. His expression softened, and he nodded. 
I know. I'm sorry I never really listened. I'm sorry I left the way I did. What did Seattle have to offer you that I didn't? Lauren's airway had closed off, and she was going to pass out and die right here and now. The question was a fair one, but it still felt like a punch in the gut. Nothing, she said quietly. I don't have a good reason for doing what I did, other than I had just lost both my parents. I tried to be there for you every step of the way. I know. I didn't know how to deal with all my emotions, and I felt like you were pushing me to deal with them your way. Lauren watched his Adam's apple bob up and down. I didn't want to force anything, he said, an edge in his voice. I would have done anything to help you. Except listen to me. Lauren ran a hand through her hair, lowering her voice. I was scared and uncertain and feeling trapped. Everywhere I turned, there were memories that made me want to curl into a ball and die. I didn't know what else to do. He swallowed hard, then nodded. I didn't realize things were so serious until you left. I'm so sorry for hurting you, Tanner. Her voice caught. You have no idea how sorry. I handled it all wrong. But I was dying inside. I had to get away. Why wasn't I enough for you? I... The door flew open, and two giggling girls entered the classroom, flopping into desks near the front of the room. Tanner swallowed, pushing his glasses up the bridge of his nose. Now isn't the time or place to have this conversation. He walked over to the students and greeted them. Lauren ducked down, pretending to fidget with the laptop while giving herself time to compose herself. Maybe now wasn't the time but he'd hinted they could continue this conversation later. Maybe they could both obtain the closure they needed to finally find some peace. Chapter 6 She was a natural teacher. Tanner sat in a desk at the back of the classroom, watching Lauren light up as she spoke about her experiences chasing storms. Not a single student had a cell phone out, trying to text underneath their desk. She looked good, more than good. The filmy blouse shimmered a bit each time she moved, and he was having a hard time focusing on the slideshow instead of her. The skirt swished around her legs, and the wedge sandals catapulted him back to warm summer nights, lying in the back of his truck, planning their future together. Even after four years... The emotions she called forth in him were as strong as ever. This was about a year ago in southern Nebraska, Lauren said, clicking to the next slide. The entire class gasped at the photo. Lauren was ducked down, her eyes wide and finger pointing as a section of fence flew over her head. Tanner gripped the edge of the desk. She'd always had a bad habit of ignoring tornado sirens in favor of standing outside to watch. But after her parents' death, she'd taken her obsession to a whole new level, an obsession he'd thought would be long gone by now. Lauren grinned at the gasps from the class. I've got video, she said, and clicked play. She appeared on the edge of the screen, a microphone in her hand. You can just see the funnel in the distance, Video Lauren said, angling her body to a point. We've received confirmation that it's an F3. Oh, gosh, it's taking out that barn. Lauren whipped back to the camera. Did you get that? Whoa. The fence appeared from out of nowhere, flying toward her head. Tanner didn't know how she even had time to duck. The screen cut to black, and the class started clapping. She was a completely different person now from the Lauren he'd known and loved. The realization settled over him as the clapping faded, a physical weight on his heart. He'd apologized. Now he needed to truly let her go. That's seriously hardcore, a guy at the front said. 
Lauren blushed. As storm chasers, we're vigilant about safety, but there's always a risk when you're that close to a storm. So why do you do it? A woman asked. Lauren ran a finger over the top of the clicker she held in one hand. Tanner leaned forward, holding his breath. Storm chasing had been the wedge in what he'd always considered a very happy relationship. He'd thought if they could just stick with their college plans and maintain a semblance of normalcy over the summer, everything would be okay. He'd wanted so desperately to protect Lauren from all the hurt, but she'd seemed unwilling to let him comfort her. My parents died in a tornado. Chasing storms helped me feel close to them again. Lauren blinked, as though struggling to keep away tears, and clicked to the next slide. There are a few different ways to track tornadoes while you're in the middle of a chase. Tanner ran a hand through his hair, frustration pulsing through him. He'd suggested buying a bench inscribed with her parents' names for the cemetery. That was the kind of sensible thing someone did to feel close to lost loved ones, not risking life and limb to get a photo of the perfect funnel cloud. An intense need to help her competed with his frustration at her choices. Lauren finished her presentation and opened it up for class discussion. The students had insightful questions and seemed excited about the material. Tanner hoped it would be easy to get them to volunteer at the Weather Center after this. Lauren had been just like these students in high school, anxious to ask questions and eager to learn, even though Tanner had been the better student. Her grades had been adequate, but he had been valedictorian. He'd been the academic, and she'd been the student council member beloved by all. Until she left without telling anyone. That had created quite a scandal in Sunset Plains, and he'd had to endure three entire months of the drama before he could leave for school. The constant reminders had ripped him apart. The room went silent, and Tanner realized all his students, and Lauren, were staring at him. Had she finished talking? He glanced at his watch and realized class would be over in two minutes. He cleared his throat and rose from the desk, walking to the front of the room and taking his place beside Lauren. Had it really been seven years since they'd first stood together at the front of a classroom, giving an oral report on weather patterns for Mrs. Olson's class? He'd wanted to ask Lauren out so badly, but had been sure she was way out of his league, even if he was a senior. After the report, Lauren had given him a flirty smile and said, We definitely need to celebrate getting an A. You can pick me up for dinner at seven. But nothing was the same now. Lauren had changed everything. Thank you for that great presentation, Tanner said. To the class, he added, Your homework is to read Chapter 10 in your textbook on tornadoes. We'll have a quiz at the beginning of next class on the material. The class clapped for Lauren, and then the room broke up into individual conversations as students gathered their backpacks and left. Slowly, Lauren unplugged the cords from her laptop. She glanced up at him, then away quickly. Even after four years, he recognized the look in her eyes, the furrowed brow, pursed lips that made him want to lean forward and kiss her, uncertain eyes. She wanted to finish their earlier conversation, but Tanner wasn't sure he was strong enough to hear what she had to say. The conversation he'd longed for suddenly seemed impossibly hard. Great job today, Tanner said. Thanks for coming. The class was really interested in what you had to say. No problem. I love sharing my experiences with others. She closed the lid on her laptop and slid it into her bag. Tanner pushed his glasses up the bridge of his nose, then shoved his hands in his pockets. Well, thanks again. I appreciate you driving down to do it. Isn't there anything else we have to say to each other? He swallowed hard, aching to reach out and cup her face between his hands, run a thumb over her cheek. I wish you all the best, he said. Lauren took a step toward him, her keys twisting around and around in her hands. Tanner swallowed hard, 
taking a step back. I'm so sorry, Tanner. You deserve better than how I treated you. I shouldn't have assumed I knew what was best for you. I'm not here to make excuses, but I do want to explain. Okay, I'm listening. She took a deep breath. The truth is, I don't have a good reason for leaving. I had just lost my parents. He folded his arms the anger breaking free and rising up like a summer squalor, the ache she'd left behind, the hole in his heart that kept him up at nights for a year, hadn't been filled. He'd just grown so used to it that he almost forgot it was there. But now Lauren was standing before him, bringing it all to the surface again. I know you had just lost your parents, Tanner said. I went with you to the police station to identify their bodies. I met with the funeral director and helped you create a program. I picked their headstones, for heaven's sake. I did everything I could to be there for you. I still don't understand why you couldn't just tell me you were leaving. You destroyed me. Tears spilled down her cheeks, and she swiped them away. Were you seriously surprised when I disappeared? I'd been telling you for weeks I had to get away. We were getting away. If you'd held out for another three months, we would have been in Texas. I never understood why that wasn't enough for you. Tanner, it was the school my parents wanted me to attend, with all the plans they made for me. Tanner's chest heaved with barely contained emotions, and a sense of failure washed over him afresh. He never thought of it that way. I thought it was all talk. She folded her arms, her eyes sad. Well, it wasn't. Why did you do it, Laura? He thought he knew the answer, but he had to hear it from her lips. She held her hands out, palms up, as though she could grasp the answer out of thin air. I felt so trapped. All those plans felt like an awful reminder of what I'd lost. I felt so alone. I had no more family. You wouldn't let me breathe, Tanner. You were trying so hard to protect me from everything, but it was something I needed to go through on my own. His heart squeezed like it was caught in a vice. He didn't like the way the honesty in her words pierced him. He had loved her so much. I'm so sorry. I wasn't enough for you. It took me a long time to realize how much I was hurting you by trying to help. I wouldn't let you be enough. The raw truth in her voice was hard to swallow, but Tanner itched to pull her into his arms. She would lay her head on his chest and let out that little sigh that had always made him putty in her hands. We both made mistakes, he said softly. She gave a small smile, and I think we both have regrets. I know I do but do you regret leaving? She nodded, her eyes glistening with tears. Every day. I wanted to come back so badly, but then I'd think of my parents and, and how much I'd hurt you and all the memories this town holds, and, and I couldn't do it. It was easier to keep running. I could have helped you. We could have gotten through it together. Maybe, she lifted a shoulder. There's no way we'll ever know now. But it feels good to finally tell you why I ran. I missed you, Lore, so much. Her face softened, and he watched her blink back tears as she nodded furiously. Me too. Please. Can we try to be friends again? The pain in her voice nearly broke him. He gently grasped her arms, pulling her toward him and wrapping her in a hug. She stood rigid in his arms for a moment, then collapsed against him. Feelings he didn't want to examine had his eyes watering and throat closing off, and he tightened his hold on her. I'm so sorry, she whispered again. So, so sorry. I know. Me too. He rubbed her back as she tightened her grip around his waist. He couldn't imagine what it had been like to go through the last four years without any connections to her past, without any sort of support system. 
She looked up at him, her face luminescent with tears, and he wanted to lean down and brush her lips with his so badly his entire body ached. He gently pushed her away. Finally having a resolution to four years of wondering had lifted a burden from his shoulders he hadn't even realized he'd still been carrying. But that didn't mean he should start a romantic relationship back up with Lauren. She wiped underneath her eyes, looking disappointed but not saying anything. Tanner grabbed his keys out of the top drawer of his desk. Come on, he said. Lauren's eyebrows rose, but she followed him. He waited for her to exit the classroom, then turned off the lights and locked the door. Where are we going? Lauren asked. To see something I know you'll appreciate. He led Lauren down the hallway and up the stairwell. Her small form followed beside him, the laptop bag bouncing against her side with each step, and he had to resist the urge to reach over and hold her hand, like he had a thousand times before. He shouldn't encourage her to stick around. They'd both said their piece, and he should let her get in her car and drive back to Tulsa. She needed a friend, not a boyfriend. But now that she was back, he wasn't sure he was strong enough to let her go a second time. Maybe she wasn't as different as he'd assumed. She felt like the same Lauren. Besides, she was the only person he knew who would appreciate this as much as he did. They exited the stairwell and Tanner unlocked the first door they came to. He pushed it open and walked inside, motioning for Lauren to follow. He held his arms out, motioning to the room. This is why I came back to Sunset Plains. Getting a weather center up and running will be part of my PhD coursework. Her mouth fell open as her eyes roved the room. Holy cow. I know. To most, the room would look unimpressive. Just six computer monitors spaced across two long desks and a wall lined with digital displays and monitors. The school applied for a grant, and they just finished installing the equipment yesterday. We're very lucky to have it at such a small campus. May I? Lauren asked, gesturing to one of the computers. Sure, Tanner said. Lauren sat down reverently, running her hand over the keyboard. The monitor sprang to life, and she clicked the program to start it running. Wow, you're running the latest system. We don't even have it at the station. We only get new software every other year. New information updates from the satellites every 60 seconds, Tanner said. We can pinpoint temperature and barometric pressure readings to within a hundredth of a decimal point, and we have a range of almost 100 miles. I'm sure you have a bigger range at Tulsa 1, but since this is only for learning purposes, that's as wide as we could afford. I think it's fantastic. Lauren said, clicking. Where's the weather station? Here, on campus. They installed everything at the back corner of the lot so that students can observe and make adjustments as part of labs. Wow. Lauren made a few quick keystrokes on the computer, then smiled. Beautiful weather in all of Tulsa today. I'm kind of surprised. It looked like a storm was brewing when I left this morning. Tanner watched Lauren brush her blonde hair over her shoulder as she zoomed in to a specific area on the screen. Her apartment, maybe? What are you going to do now that you've come back? Tanner asked quietly. She held his gaze, and he thought he saw a spark of what they'd once had in the way her lips turned up and her eyes lightened. But then she looked away, rubbing her hand over a spot on the desk. Work hard at Tulsa One so I can get the roving reporter spot next year and report on weather from the field. Chasing tornadoes isn't going to bring them back. Her jaw clenched. I know. Why are you risking your life for a job? Have you done anything other than chase tornadoes during the last four years? That's not fair. I enjoy my job, okay? That's not a crime. Tanner struggled to keep his breathing even as heat licked up his face. It's not healthy. You still haven't dealt with your parents' deaths. That's why it took you four years to come back to Sunset Plains. Lay off, Tanner. He pushed his glasses up the bridge of his nose, agitation making the movement jerky. 
I'm not going to stand by and watch you self-destruct. Don't tell me to lay off. She let out a growl, her finger angrily clicking the mouse from screen to screen. Then she paused, leaning forward. Holy cow, she said, her voice tinged with excitement. What? There's a tornado coming. Tanner dropped into a chair beside her, scooting close. Are you serious? Yes. There's an updraft right here. The mesocyclone is about two miles in diameter right now, she pointed. See the hook echo? Mesocyclones happen all the time. It's probably nothing. Yeah, but there's a severe thunderstorm warning in effect for a few more hours. I have a feeling about this. She stood, looping her laptop bag over one shoulder. You should alert the fire department and have them sound the tornado siren. Wait. Tanner grabbed her arm, panic making his body ache with tension. Where are you going? To chase the storm. I keep a camera in my car just in case. Lauren, that's crazy. I've been doing it for years. I'll be fine. You're running again. Her steps faltered. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. Electricity sparked, and he slowly reached up, brushing a lock of hair behind her ear. Four years. And you still feel it too, don't you? She took a deep, shuddering breath. This has nothing to do with us. Please, Lauren, I'm asking you not to go. I have to, she whispered. And then she walked out the door. Chapter 7 Lauren gripped the steering wheel as she drove to the outskirts of town. What was Tanner doing? Had he lost his mind? Dark cumulonimbus clouds billowed in the distance, and the earth shook as thunder rumbled again. Her wiper blades furiously attempted to keep up with the rain splashing against her windshield. Lightning flashed against the sky, the crack of thunder so loud she could feel it vibrate the floorboard of her car. Tears clouded her vision, and she blinked quickly. Seeing anything in this rain was challenging enough. He felt the chemistry that still zinged between them two. What did that even mean? What did she want it to mean? It couldn't mean anything. Too much time had passed, and too much had come between them. His reaction to her leaving for the tornado proved nothing had really changed. There, she'd found the mesocyclone. Wind swirled the clouds together in the beginning stages of a funnel. Come on, she muttered. Form a tornado. She pulled out her phone, not bothering to pull to the side of the road, and check the readings. It was an app for hobbyists, nowhere near as sophisticated as the station's top-of-the-line equipment, but that, combined with a visual of the skies and a desperate need to get away from Tanner, was all she had right now. She didn't know what to do with these emotions. She'd wanted to apologize, and she had. But now that she was back in Sunset Plains, the memories she'd been avoiding were way too close to the surface. She could still remember what it felt like to have the police track her down at Tanner's. They'd been kissing on his couch when Cassidy burst into the room, embarrassing them both. But the look of terror in Cassidy's eyes had made Lauren forget all about getting caught making out. What's wrong? Lauren had demanded. The police, Cassidy gasped, her skin pale. They need to talk to you. Lauren raced to the front room, the familiar faces of two officers staring at her with grim expressions. I'm sorry, Lauren, Officer Darling said. There's been an accident, and we found your parents in the pass. We need you to come with us to identify the bodies. Lightning flashed, followed immediately by the crack of thunder, yanking Lauren from her thoughts and back to the present. She leaned forward, trying to see out the windshield obscured by rain. Her entire life had changed in that moment. She had thought she would die. Had wanted to, for a moment. And Tanner hadn't listened, 
hadn't tried to understand her pain. All he'd wanted to do was fix it. The funnel grew, becoming more distinct. Wind buffeted her car back and forth on the narrow country road, and she struggled to maintain control. Fierce determination to get as close as possible to the vortex filled her. She needed her parents, not Tanner. Lauren pressed the pedal, forcing the car to pick up speed as she drove closer. She rolled down her window and leaned out, not caring when her hair instantly became soaked. The funnel was less than a mile away, half-formed. She could almost hear the experts she'd shadowed the last four summers telling her it was time to pack it up and move further away. Lauren clutched the steering wheel tighter, pulling her head back inside the car. He'd asked her to stay, and she'd left. Again. He has no right to ask me to stay, Lauren thought. I'm not his girlfriend. We're barely even friends anymore. A lump formed in her throat, and she fought it back, focusing on the clouds. The experts were too cautious. She was fine. The funnel was barely a half a mile away now. Perfect. Lauren stopped in the middle of the road and put the car in park. She grabbed her camera from the passenger seat, already covered in plastic to protect it from the rain, and started snapping photos out the rolled down window. Shannon would be green with jealousy when Lauren told her about this. Why had Lauren thought coming home was a good idea? She didn't need to face her past. She needed to bury it. No good would come of reliving bad memories. Tornadoes were her future now, not Tanner. The funnel grew longer, a perfect smokestack. Rain soaked the front of Lauren's shirt, and her hands trembled with the cold and adrenaline. Hopefully the images wouldn't end up blurry. No matter how many times she saw a tornado, it never got old. Raindrops splattered on her arms, a warm hug from her parents. Debris flew around the edges of the vortex as it picked up grass and smaller trees. An F2, she'd guess. There was a beautiful power to the tornado, one that had her staring in awe. Were her parents watching her now? The wind howled, the sound shifting to an ear-piercing shriek as the funnel grew longer and longer. Time to go, she heard the professional storm chasers telling her more urgently. Had her parents had time to feel this surge of adrenaline? And then, the vortex touched down. A shot of terror pierced through the thrill as the funnel obliterated a field in a second. It picked up a mobile home in the middle of the property, flipping it end over end, and she let out a gasp. Had there been people inside? Lauren could still make out the faint wail of the tornado sirens and hoped they'd made it to shelter in time. She'd never been so close to the vortex. I'm here, Mama and Dad, she thought. Do you know how much I miss you? Lauren continued to film out the car window, watching in awe as the tornado ripped across the prairie. The warnings of her mentors were but a distant memory. The funnel wasn't headed toward her, and she couldn't bring herself to stop filming and move back. The white funnel cloud grew dark and less defined as it tossed what looked like a four-wheeler into the air. Lauren held her breath, praying that no one had been riding it. Had her parents witnessed this sort of destruction before ending up in the middle of it? She'd give almost anything to have the station's portable weather system with her right now. The span of the cell had to be close to a half a mile wide at the top. The Doppler would be lit up like a Christmas tree. And then, the funnel turned. The narrow end of the smokestack ripped across the field, heading straight for her. Lauren dropped her camera into the passenger seat and jammed the car into gear, spewing curses. Her mentors had been right, and now she would die because of her stupidity. Her parents would be so pissed when she showed up in heaven about 60 years too soon. She gunned the engine, flying across the rough blacktop at a dangerous speed of nearly 70 miles an hour. Her wheels spun on the wet road, and she skidded sideways before the rubber caught again. She glanced behind her, heart nearly beating out of her chest. 
She'd never before been close enough to pick out individual air currents inside a vortex. Was that a shovel caught inside? Terror made it hard to think, hard to be rational. Should she drive faster, veer into the field? So this is what her parents felt like right before they died. The back wheels of the car lifted off the ground and a scream ripped from Lauren's throat. She so didn't want to die today. The wheels landed back on the asphalt and her teeth slammed together, the impact vibrating her entire face. She screamed again, gripping the wheel as she tried to keep control of the car. Forget her parents. Tanner would never forgive her for not listening to him. Lauren pressed the gas, desperate to outrun this vicious force of Mother Nature. She hadn't even been this scared when the fence flew at her head. When would she realize tornadoes were only beautiful from a distance? Being chased by one was terrifying. And yet she came back every time. She closed her eyes, desperately trying to feel close to her parents. But all she felt was the horror of being caught in the storm. The wheels lifted off the ground and dropped again. Another scream burned her throat, desperate for escape. She'd never outrun the vortex. Her only hope was that a narrow funnel would allow her to escape its path. She wrenched the wheel to the left and gunned it, plowing through a barbed wire fence. The car bounced, engine revving as the wheels spun in the soft, muddy field. The wheels caught for a moment before being jerked back. The vortex was pulling her out. Suddenly, the entire car was airborne. The shovel slammed against the windshield and pebbled glass rained down on Lauren. She couldn't think, couldn't breathe. And then the tornado let go, and the car slammed against the ground. Her head hit the steering wheel, and everything went black. Chapter 8 Tanner knelt on the carpeted floor of his office and opened a box of books. He yanked out a few, then set them on the bookshelf with a growl. Yearbooks. Lauren had filled an entire page of his senior one with a love letter and signed it by pressing her pink, gloss-covered lips to the bottom of the page. Sometimes, when he'd let the memories consume him in that first year after she disappeared, he'd open up the book and trace the outline with his finger. He slammed more books on the shelf, hiding the yearbooks behind them. He should shove them in the damp crawl space where they belonged. Two hours since Lauren had left. Two hours, and she hadn't even bothered to send him a text letting him know she was okay. He didn't know why he was surprised. Lauren owed him nothing, and he'd pissed her off. She was probably back in Tulsa, uploading her footage to the studio's server so it could air on the 10 o'clock news. The tornado had been a minor one, barely a blip on the radar for most native to Oklahoma. But Lauren had been upset when she left, and probably not thinking clearly. Her parents had been extremely cautious people, and they'd still ended up dead because of a simple Sunday drive. Would Lauren disappear again, dooming him to another four years of uncertainty and trying to move on? She'd always been an unresolved thread from his past threatening to unravel the whole tapestry. He couldn't do another four years like the last four. Tanner swiped his car keys off the kitchen counter and stomped out to his truck. Updates from neighbors on his Facebook feed suggested the damage was localized to fields just outside the town boundaries. A mobile home had been destroyed, which seemed to be the worst of it. Luckily, no one had been inside at the time. Tanner blasted country music as he drove toward the outskirts of town, his window down and the cool breeze tugging at his hair. The entire time they'd dated, Tanner had been intensely protective of Lauren. Maybe it was her small stature, or maybe it was the way she disregarded her own safety in favor of adventure. Reckless. She'd always been so blasted reckless. He'd nearly had a heart attack when she climbed the rickety and incredibly high water tower on one of their first dates but she hadn't chased storms until that last month. He cruised down an empty road with fields soggy from the storm, not even certain he was headed down the right path. 
and then he saw the first section of fencing collapsed on its side. A post yanked out of the ground. A tornado had been here. That meant Lauren had been, too. Debris littered the pavement, shards of wood mixed with grass and hay. A few soda cans and what looked like a shovel handle were strewn across the pavement. He slowed down, not wanting to puncture a tire, as his heart climbed into his throat. She'd been storm chasing for years. Supposedly, she'd trained with professionals. Surely, Lauren wasn't stupid enough to put herself in a dangerous situation. Except, storm chasing was always dangerous, no matter the safety precautions. Anger might have made her reckless. Tanner kept driving. The road became even more cluttered with debris. He passed a barn missing half its shingles. Corn had been uprooted and littered the field and road. Half a mile down the road, he could make out the mobile home lying on its side, identical to the picture he'd seen on Facebook. A glint of silver caught his eye, almost hidden by the tall prairie grasses. He slammed on his brakes, shoving the gear shift into park. A car was flipped upside down, the roof smashed, and silver paint dulled by the mud peppering the body of the car. The front windshield was gone, the edges of the frame ragged with broken glass. And on the rear bumper was a Tulsa One sticker, nearly obscured by mud. Lauren. He threw open his truck door and stumbled to the car. She hung suspended from the driver's seat. Dried blood congealed in her white blonde hair and streaked down her face and neck. Lauren, Tanner yelled. Please, God. He pulled on the door handle and forced it open with an ear-splitting shriek of metal on metal, praying with everything in him that she was okay. He just found her again. This couldn't be how their story ended. A sob caught in his throat and he struggled to think clearly. How was he supposed to let her handle grief in her own way when this was the result? Tanner placed two shaking fingers to her neck, holding his breath as he prayed for a pulse. A faint flutter thrummed beneath his fingers, and he let out a strangled laugh. She moved away from his touch and groaned, the sound stronger than he had expected. He fumbled in his pocket for his phone, then cursed when he found nothing more than pocket lint. He must have left it in the truck. Can you hear me? Tanner knelt in the tall grass, trying to see her better. Looking at everything upside down was more disorienting than he'd expected it to be. Should he run back for the phone, or make sure Lauren was stable first? The thought of leaving her for even 60 seconds was unbearable. Lauren didn't respond. He glanced helplessly back at the truck, then carefully stuck his head inside her car, peering at the seatbelt latch. Nothing obstructed it, and the metal appeared intact. Hopefully it would unlatch just fine. The front of the car had been turned into a crumpled mess, but he could see most of her legs. Hopefully she could slip out without much trouble. Time to call an ambulance. He pulled his head out of the car, ready to race back to the truck. Ouch, Lauren whispered. He let out a hoarse laugh, pushing his glasses up the bridge of his nose. I thought you were dead. Tornado got the best of me, she whispered. Yeah, well, I warned you not to go. She opened an eye, peering up at him with that clear emerald green color he'd always loved. How were her pupils not dilated? Surely she had a concussion. It looked like her head had bled for a while. Are you going to get me out or leave me here to rot? She whispered. I'm going back to the truck for my phone so I can call 911. I don't know if I should move you. She let out a grunt. Her fingers moved toward the seatbelt buckle and she fumbled with the latch. What are you doing? He asked in alarm. Getting out of the car. We should call the paramedics and let them assess you first. Don't. The word was stronger than her others had been. Lore, I'm not on the station's insurance for another 30 days, and I'm not wasting a part of my inheritance on an unnecessary ambulance ride. Her fingers found the release button. Stop! He reached inside the car, his hand seizing hers. Then help me. Like it was so easy. What if you have a spinal injury? I don't. 
She slowly turned her neck first one way, then the other. She wiggled her fingers, and he could see her legs moving. See? Doesn't even hurt. Yeah, I can tell. Okay. If he didn't help her, she'd release the latch and possibly injure herself. He scooted closer, bracing his weight on one leg while his opposite knee rested on the ground. When I release this, you're going to fall, but I'll try to catch you. That was always one of your special talents. Apparently, that particular skill has lapsed. He swallowed, stretching an arm across her shoulders and gripping the seat hard to hold her back once the seatbelt unlatched. He was a professor, not a jock who spent hours in the gym. But Lauren was tiny. Are you ready? She raised her eyes heavenward, a clear sign of praying for patience, then nodded. Okay, then. He pressed the latch and the seatbelt slid back as Lauren's body fell forward. Tanner's grip slipped and he reached out with his other arm to catch her just before she fell against the steering wheel. Her feet scrambled underneath her, searching for something to stand on. For the first time, he noticed the deep gash in her leg, just above her knee. You're hurt, he said, some of the anger seeping through his voice. Her feet found solid ground, and Tanner helped ease her out of the car. She tried to straighten, then stumbled, inhaling sharply when she placed weight on her leg. It's cut pretty badly, Tanner said. You're going to need stitches. She gritted her teeth. It's fine. It looks serious. It's a tiny cut. Stop being so dang stubborn and let me help you. It always comes back to that, doesn't it? Lauren said. Tanner winced. He was doing it. Again. Would he ever learn? He shook his head, disgusted with himself as much as Lauren. She was still grieving, and he needed to take a step back and let her, even though it terrified him. But first, he needed to get her medical attention. Wait. She shuffled over to the car, then reached inside and grabbed a camera from the floorboard. The lens was cracked, and one side of the camera had been smashed, probably when it hit the roof in the fall. Are you serious? He said. I think I got some good shots. Memory card is probably still okay. Tanner rolled his eyes, then took the purse and laptop bag Lauren handed him as well. Okay she said. I'm ready. Stubborn, reckless Lauren. He wrapped an arm around her waist and helped her limp the few feet back to his truck. Blood dripped from her leg with every step. I'm going to ruin your floor mats, Lauren said. He placed his hands around her waist and lifted her up into the passenger seat. Her waist fit perfectly in his hands, just like it always had, and he swallowed hard. I can replace the floor mats. He couldn't replace Lauren. Thank you, she said. Tanner bit back the retort on the edge of his tongue. Lauren hadn't purposely hurt herself to spite him. Your head stopped bleeding, but you need to have that and your leg looked at. Insurance. Stop being so dang stubborn. He slammed her door shut and climbed into the driver's seat. I'm taking you to the hospital in Meadow Falls. That death trap? She let out a snort. I'd be better off alone at home. The hospital's improved a lot in the last four years. The world didn't stop turning just because you ran off. Lauren folded her arms and glared. At least take me to urgent care. It'll be a lot cheaper than the hospital, and it's closer. Meadow Falls is 15 minutes away. Sunset Plains and urgent care is 10. Tanner blew out a breath, then nodded. He made a three-point turn on the narrow road and headed back toward Sunset Plains. What happened? he asked. Lauren shrugged, then winced gingerly, touching her forehead. The tornado turned at the last minute. I couldn't drive fast enough. You mean it actually got you? His hands gripped the steering wheel as the inside of his mouth turned into a desert, if the tornado had been any bigger. Just for a moment. She pointed to where the car lay, only a few paces off the road. It didn't move me far, see? Like that made getting caught up in a tornado no big deal. 
Were the shots worth it? What? The shots? He motioned to the camera clutched in her hand. Were they worth risking your life? You're being dramatic. He let out a hollow laugh. <laughs> right. I didn't realize it was so close, okay? I thought I still had time. You miss your parents so much, you're willing to risk your life to feel close to them. That's not healthy, Lore. This isn't about them. It is. Your parents died, and you started chasing storms, and you left. And I got to spend the next four years picking up the pieces and trying to move on. Now you're back, and it's like no time has passed at all. It's wrecking me inside again. What are you doing? I'm trying to start a career. I don't buy it. He ran a hand through his hair. Is this about what happened back at the school? I don't know what you're talking about. I know I'm not the only one who still feels it. Did it freak you out? Is that why you were so reckless? <sighs> this isn't about our relationship. She blew out breath. You wanted to do everything for me after they died. It was suffocating. He swallowed hard, trying to keep his anger at bay. You keep using that word. Because it's how I felt. All I wanted was to protect you. She reached out, resting her hand on his, and when she spoke again, her voice was soft. I know. I wish we both would have handled things differently. We can handle them differently now. He glanced over and Lauren slowly shook her head. I don't know if we can. I loved you so much, he choked out. The past tense felt like a lie. I was saving up for a ring. At Christmas, I was gonna propose. He heard her intake of breath. I didn't know. He doubted it would have made a difference if she had. Yeah, well, you didn't stick around long enough for me to tell you. I loved you too, Tanner. Whatever else happened between us, I don't ever want you to question that. He whipped into a parking stall at the urgent care clinic, wanting to shake her and kiss her all at once. Let's go see how much damage your reckless behavior has caused this time. At least none of it is emotional, right? Tanner. He shut the door, cutting off her words. She didn't try to speak as he helped her into the clinic. He grabbed a clipboard and tapped his finger against his thigh while she filled out the information. You don't have to wait with me, she said. I'm a big girl and I can take care of myself. I saw how well you took care of yourself this afternoon. That could have happened to anyone. Right because random people chase tornadoes all the time. Everyone had their car thrown across a field by a funnel. Okay, so he did know two other people that had happened to. Lauren's parents. A shiver chilled his entire body. Lauren could have died, too. He wasn't sure he could handle losing her again, and the implications of that terrified him. Lauren handed him the clipboard and he took it to the receptionist at the front desk. An hour later, they left the clinic. Lauren had been lucky. Nothing more than a small cut on her forehead the physician's assistant had glued shut and five stitches for the one above her knee. Miraculously, she'd somehow escaped a concussion. I'll drive you back to Tulsa, Tanner muttered once they were back in the car. There's no need for that. Just drop me off at Jake's garage so he can tell me the damage. Fine, he ground out. Thank you. Two minutes later, he pulled up to the only auto garage in Sunset Plains. Lauren had made arrangements while they waited at the doctor's office, and he could already see her smashed-up car in one of the bays. Let me help you inside, he said. Thanks, but I can take care of myself. Lauren got out of the car and slammed the door shut. The finality of that bang echoed throughout the truck long after she was gone. Chapter 9 Thanks for driving me back to Sunset Plains, Lauren said, shifting on Shannon's cracked leather seat. Are you kidding me? Shannon glanced over at Lauren, 
her smoker's rasp growing more pronounced. After the footage you caught, I'd do anything for you. Doyle's over the moon. You're my frickin' hero. Lauren gave a weak smile, tucking a lock of hair behind her ear. Miraculously, the memory card had survived the crash. Doyle had indeed been happy with the tornado shots, and it had aired on the 10 o'clock news that night with an extremely positive response. I was an idiot, Lauren said. I never should have gotten so close. I wasn't thinking. But she'd done a lot of thinking since that night. Her parents had been on her mind even more than usual, and she could sense their disapproval from beyond the grave like a physical weight. It was hardcore, Shannon said. We're definitely replacing the roving reporter when she retires next year. Twenty minutes later, Shannon entered the borders of Sunset Plains, and Lauren gave her directions to Jake's garage. Lauren's car sat in a corner of the parking lot, smashed flat like a pancake. Shannon pulled to a stop and whistled. Is that it? Yeah, Lauren said. It was even worse than she remembered. You are one lucky dog. How was I supposed to know the twister would turn at the last second? Uh, maybe because you spent four summers storm chasing with experts? Funny. That's exactly what Lauren had imagined her parents saying the last few days. Lauren rolled her eyes. Oh, shut up. Shannon laughed. Lauren got out of the car, carefully walking across the parking lot. After a week, her leg was doing better, but it still hurt to walk since her barely healing skin stretched and pulled with every step. At least she'd gotten the stitches taken out yesterday. Clouds covered the sky, and the air was cooler than normal. Lauren opened the door to the shop, and the smell of car oil and brake fluid instantly overwhelmed her. She'd come here with her dad more than once growing up for parts he'd ordered to repair one of their cars. The memory wrapped around Lauren like a hug, and she blinked back tears. Jake looked up from the counter, a wide grin on his face. He'd been in Tanner's graduating class and hadn't changed much in the last four years. Same beefy arms, golden hair, and friendly smile. Hey, he said. You're back. Sorry it took me so long to get here, Lauren said. I had to wait for my next day off. No problem, Jake said. I just need you to sign a few things for the insurance company. Let me get the work order. Lauren looked through the paperwork Jake brought her, swallowing hard at the descriptions of her totaled vehicle. She'd been lucky to make it out alive. Worst of all, she hadn't felt close to her parents while her car was being thrown across the field, not the way she felt close to them in Sunset Plains, with memories of happier times surrounding her. The memories no longer stabbed the way they had when she left, but instead soothed her aching heart. She signed her name on the lines Jake indicated, then handed him the paperwork. It was almost two o'clock. Tanner's class should just be starting. She hadn't heard from him since he'd dropped her off at Jake's a week ago. Was he still angry, or had his anger turned into apathy? Her heart squeezed as she thought of him hating her all over again. We're all done here, Jake said, taking the stack of papers from Lauren. I'll stick the papers in the mail tomorrow morning. If you haven't heard from the insurance company in a week or two, let me know, and I'll resubmit my report. Oh, he reached under the counter and grabbed a box. There you go. There wasn't much in the car to salvage. Lauren took the box, looking down at the collection of papers from the dashboard, as well as a few stray pens and a cell phone charger. Thanks, she said. No problem. Sorry again about the car. Lauren waved and left, Shannon on her heels. The sky had darkened while they were inside, turning from overcast to dark. Wind whipped dust into the air from the gravel parking lot. He's cute, Shannon said as she unlocked the car. Are all the guys like that in Sunset Plains, or just him? Tanner's shaggy brown hair and adorable grin flashed in Lauren's mind. Jake's definitely cute, but he's not the only one. Oh, you're thinking of Tanner, the ex you're so close-lipped about. Lauren opened her mouth to disagree, but her phone started ringing. 
Hold on a sec, she said, setting the box on the back seat of Shannon's car. It's Doyle. Crap, Shannon said. It'll take us an hour to get back to Tulsa. He knows we're here today. Lauren swiped her finger across the screen and put it on speaker so Shannon could hear as well. Hello? Lauren, Doyle said, his deep voice filled with excitement. So glad you answered. What can I do for you? Lauren asked as Shannon raised an eyebrow, mouthing, What? Lauren shrugged. How would you like the chance to air another weather story on the 10 o'clock news? Doyle asked. Lauren's mouth dropped open and Shannon pumped a fist into the air. We'd love to cover another weather story, Lauren said. What have you got? Are you still in Sunset Plains with Shannon? Yes, but we can leave right now, Lauren said. Shannon nodded vigorously. No, I want you to stay, Doyle said. A severe thunderstorm warning is in effect for Sunset Plains, and our scans indicate it might turn into a pretty big tornado. Shannon jumped up and down, nodding vigorously. Just how big a tornado are we talking? Lauren asked. She waited for the fear and exhilaration to bubble up inside her, but she felt strangely empty. Not sure, maybe an F3 or F4? Lauren inhaled sharply. She'd only chased one F4, and it had been terrifying. That night at the hotel, she'd huddled under the blankets and watched reruns of Gilligan's Island, pretending she was back in Sunset Plains with her parents. The Doppler's changing so fast we can't keep up with it, Doyle continued. I'm guessing the storm will hit in about an hour. How do the skies look there? Lauren glanced up at the gray clouds, cold fingers of fear skittering down her spine. It's pretty windy, but no rain yet. Well, keep an eye on it, Doyle said. I know you have limited resources, but do your best with what you have. I wish we could get the satellite van and Doppler equipment to you in time for a live broadcast. Oh well, you'll have to track this storm the old-fashioned way. We can do that, Lauren said. Does Shannon have her good equipment on hand? Yes, sir, Shannon said, speaking for the first time. I never leave home without my camera. Doyle chuckled. I knew I could count on you ladies. Keep me posted. And Lauren. Yes, Lauren said. Don't let this tornado get you, okay? I'd hate to have to groom another rookie to take over the roving reporter spot next year. Shannon's mouth fell open, and Lauren held up her hand for a silent high five. But the motion felt automatic, hollow. What was wrong with her? This was the break she'd been waiting for. You've got it, Lauren said. They said their goodbyes, and she hung up the phone. Holy crap! Shannon let out a whoop. He pretty much just promised us the roving reporter spot. I know, but how are we going to track the storm? Lauren held up her phone. All I have is that stupid app. Well, how did you track the last one? Lauren climbed inside the car, her heart pounding with anticipation and dread. She glanced back at Jake's garage, the warm glow of happy memories now completely gone. Tanner wouldn't be pleased if she asked to use the equipment for another storm. Shannon turned the key in the ignition, then turned to face Lauren. Okay, what aren't you telling me? Lauren chewed on her nail, then sighed. Okay, there's a weather station with Doppler equipment at the satellite campus across town. You don't seem that enthusiastic. Is it running on an outdated system or something? No, it's great. Even better than what we have at the station. So what's the problem? Shannon asked. Tanner, you know, my ex, is the one in charge of it. He's not too happy with me these days. Was Lauren really using storms as a way to run away from feelings she still couldn't process? She wasn't 18 anymore, a child devastated by her parents' deaths. Was she using storms to push Tanner away? Wait, you mean broke his heart, Tanner? Shannon asked. I didn't break his heart. Shannon rolled her eyes. You told me you left without even breaking up with him. He was devastated. <laughs> Promise. Yeah, well, now he's pissed. 
He teaches intro to meteorology at the campus, which means he's the one in charge of the lab and the one with the keys. Did you guys have a fight or something? Could you fight if you were no longer a couple and barely even friends? Let's just say he was less than happy with my decision to chase that last tornado. We didn't part on the best of terms. Well, he's going to have to get over that, Shannon said. Because if we want the best possible shots of this storm, we need up-to-date and specific information. She pointed at the darkening sky. Right now, I wouldn't even know which direction to head. We need to see where the cell is forming. This is our chance, Lore. We've got to come through for Doyle. Yeah, okay. Lauren sighed, running a hand through her hair. He's probably at the campus right now. We can head over there and ask him to let us use the equipment. Maybe if you're with me, he won't say no. It's worth a shot. Shannon turned on the ignition and pulled out of the parking lot of Jake's. Is Tanner worth a shot? Lauren wondered. In high school, she definitely thought he was. And even after four years, those emotions hadn't dimmed. She might even still love him. Being back in Sunset Plains reminded her starkly of just how much she'd given up when she ran. But thinking about Tanner like that was ridiculous. Too much time had passed. So this is where you grew up, huh? Shannon said, breaking into Lauren's thoughts. Yeah. Lauren let her eyes drift to the tall prairie grasses lining the road. She could almost see her parents laughing as they picnicked on a sunny Sunday afternoon the green grasses blowing in a gentle breeze. And how has it been being back? Hard, Lauren admitted. The funeral was really challenging. But it had also been healing somehow. The memories no longer hurt so badly. Did you get the closure you were looking for? Shannon asked. Not yet. But hopefully she would very soon. Chapter 10 Lauren's stomach nodded as they pulled into the parking lot of the satellite campus. She chewed on a nail, searching for Tanner's rusting green truck. She quickly located it near the back of the lot, the Texas A&M window sticker a dead giveaway it was his. Wind billowed through the trees and branches thrashed about as leaves tumbled across the blacktop. Lauren could totally relate to those trees right about now. So, is this Tanner guy going to kick us out of the building once we get inside, or what? Shannon asked as she unclicked her seatbelt. Tanner is always a gentleman, even if he had no problem scolding Lauren for what he considered bad decisions. They were bad decisions, a voice that sounded suspiciously like her mother's whispered. Chasing this tornado now is a very bad decision. It's too dangerous. Lauren pulled up on the door handle, and the wind yanked it from her hand. It slammed open before whipping back toward her foot, poised halfway out of the car. Lauren caught it just in time. Her hair tore from her ponytail and flew around her face, the strands hitting her with enough force to make her eyes water. Lauren and Shannon stumbled across the parking lot and toward the building. Grit filled the air, and Lauren spit, trying to clear it from her mouth. Chasing the tornado won't bring us back, the voice that sounded like her mother's said again. In four years, has chasing storms ever once made you truly happy? Lauren focused on the wind rushing through the trees, trying to drown out the thoughts. She grabbed the front door, but the wind kept it firmly shut. Shannon added her strength to Lauren's, and together they pried it open an inch. That was all the wind needed. It caught the door, flinging it against the wall with a loud crack. Lauren and Shannon raced inside, narrowly missing the slam as the door shut again, flung closed by the wind. It's going to be a big one, Shannon said, her eyes glowing with excitement. Her auburn hair was a ratted mess around her face. Where do we find Tanner? I'm dying to see this storm on radar. He'll either be in his classroom or the lab. Lauren pointed down the eerily quiet hallway. It's the second to last door on the right. Are you sure this place is open? Shannon asked. 
There were multiple classes going on when I visited at this time a few days ago. Maybe they were canceled for the storm warning. When did they have time to cancel? Lauren shrugged. It's a small campus, and word gets around fast. Most students could be home in minutes. Her flip-flops echoed in the empty hallway with each step. Each room they passed was dark, the door shut tight, and Tanner's was no different. Shannon turned the knob. Locked. They all look locked. Maybe he's not here. On the one hand, Lauren wouldn't have to deal with her swooping stomach and Tanner's disapproving scowl. But on the other hand, she and Shannon really needed to know where the storm was headed so they could get the shot and impress Doyle. Lauren wouldn't let a few conversations with Tanner change her goals. But what was the point of chasing storms if it only made her feel more empty inside? Maybe he's in the lab, watching the storm, like we want to, Shannon said. That's where I'd be. If Lauren told Tanner they were chasing this storm, it would be as good as severing all ties, forever. But the thought of giving up that tenuous link to her parents was terrifying. Sunset Plains is a link to us, her mother's voice said again. Come home. Lauren ground her teeth. Yeah, you're probably right, she told Shannon. The lab's upstairs. They climbed the stairs to the second floor, and Lauren led them down the quiet hallway. She knew immediately that they'd found Tanner. The lab door was propped open by a doorstop, and light spilled into the hallway. What do I do? Lauren whispered. Knock, Shannon said. Such a simple action, but it felt significant. A step Lauren wasn't sure she should take. She closed her eyes, a headache throbbing at the back of her skull. Tanner acted like he wanted to put the past behind them and not only move on, but move forward. Together. But was that what she wanted? Lauren rapped sharply on the door. Tanner, are you in there? Wheel squeaked as though a chair rolled back and then the door swung wide, revealing Tanner in jeans and a button-down shirt, glasses sliding down the slope of his nose. Lauren's heart pounded, and she placed a hand on the door to steady herself. Lauren? He said, an eyebrow raised in surprise. Was it a good surprise or a bad one? Hi. She cleared her throat, then grabbed Shannon's arm, pulling her forward. Tanner, this is Shannon, my camera gal at the station. Shannon, meet Tanner. Shannon stuck out her hand. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Tanner murmured, taking her hand. He looked back and forth between them. Can I help you with something? Yes, Shannon said. We're hoping you'll let us use your equipment. Tanner folded his arms, and his eyes hardened. You're chasing another storm? Lauren lifted a shoulder, looking away. Boss's orders. Why did chasing the tornado feel like telling Tanner goodbye forever? It would be awesome if we could get a look at the Doppler before we go out there, Shannon said. We're kind of blind here, no equipment or anything. Our boss really wants this footage, and it'd go a long way toward convincing him we should replace the roving reporter when she retires. Yeah, I guess that would be okay. Tanner stepped aside, motioning them into the small space. Lauren tried to read his body language, but he gave nothing away. Was he upset she was chasing another storm? Did he care at all? Did he want her out of his life completely? Did she want him out of hers? Wow. Shannon bent down, peering at the computer that Tanner had obviously been working on. A Doppler image filled the screen, the greens, blues, and yellows hard to miss. The detailing on this image is incredible. We're really lucky to have it at such a small campus. Have a seat. Tanner turned to Lauren. You know how to work the program. Thanks. Lauren sank into the chair and started clicking, searching for the images she wanted. She couldn't make a decision about Tanner or tornadoes right now. The hollow feeling in her chest that even a storm couldn't fill might mean nothing. But maybe Tanner was right, and chasing storms was just a way to cover up the pain. 
and maybe Sunset Plains was a much better healing agent. Her eyes widened as an image filled the screen. Dark blue was surrounded by purple, which bled into red, then yellow. The storm hadn't quite formed an eye, but it would very soon. Lauren clicked, zooming in to take measurements. It's beautiful, Shannon breathed. Textbook perfect. I've been watching it for almost an hour, Tanner said. In fact, I was on the phone with the fire department right before you arrived, letting them know to sound the tornado sirens. It's moving fairly quickly and headed right toward town. A lot of people will be in big trouble if it hits. Fear for her former neighbor swept through Lauren. She leaned forward, studying the image. I don't think it'll quite make it to town. It could turn, Tanner said, the words thick with underlying meaning. What if the tornado destroyed the town that held so many memories of her parents? I don't want to go, she realized. Lauren blinked, focusing on the screen again. She was being ridiculous. Storm chasing had been all she wanted for the last four years. That cell will be huge and looks ready to form at any moment, Lauren said. It's still at least five miles outside of town. The sirens should encourage most to get to safety, Tanner said. This might be an F5, Shannon said, awe in her voice. I've never tracked one this big. F4 at least, Lauren agreed, her knees trembling. She wouldn't forget what it felt like to be picked up by the twister and thrown into a field any time soon. You don't have to chase it, her mother's voice whispered. The shaking in Lauren's knees increased. Could she really return to her old life? To Sunset Plains? It seemed crazy. Lauren grabbed a piece of scratch paper and scribbled down some notes. Now was not the time to make this decision. I wish we could take the equipment with us, Shannon said with a sigh. Even the station's portable equipment would be better than the crappy phone app. This will have to do. Lauren folded the paper and tucked it in her pocket. Thanks for letting us use the equipment, Tanner. Wait. He grabbed her arm, pulling her to a stop. I'll, uh, go check on the camera, Shannon said, and slipped from the room. Tanner stared down at Lauren, his eyes searching. You're not seriously going to chase after that storm, he said, his voice incredulous. She swallowed, conflicting emotions battling within her. It's my job. The last one nearly killed you. It threw your car across a field. I'll be more careful this time. Careful? He gave a disbelieving laugh. Have you ever chased something that big? No. Then don't chase this. His voice was tinged with desperation. I know you're still grieving, but there has to be another way. Please, Lore. I'm begging you. Don't do this. Don't leave. Let's figure out something else. Lauren stared at Tanner, confusion coursing through her. His words were saying one thing, but his eyes suggested he wasn't only talking about the storm. It was too much. She pulled her hand from his. I have to go, she whispered. We can talk about this later. Lauren. She ignored him and ran out the door. Had he been asking her to stay for him or because he was worried for her safety? And why did she want to stay so badly? Lauren slipped into the car, and the wind slammed the door shut behind her. Everything okay? Shannon asked. Yes. Let's go find that funnel. Chapter 11 Tanner stared at the door, feeling as though she'd ripped out his heart and stomped on it. She left. Again. Tanner stumbled into the chair, his breathing ragged. So that was it then. It hadn't been her parents' deaths that had caused her to leave. She was just the type of girl who ran away. He ran a hand over his face, trying to steady his breathing. 
No, that didn't quite make sense either. For three years, they'd had a stable relationship. Nothing had changed until after her parents' deaths. He slammed his hand against the desk. Four years apart, and he still loved her as much as the day she left. The way she'd looked at him said she did too, but her actions told a different story. He watched the storm grow larger on the monitor, sweeping toward town, and Lauren was headed straight for it. She needed tornadoes to feel close to her parents, to fill the hole they'd left in her life. And as dangerous as reporting on tornadoes could be, if he didn't let her grieve in her own way, he'd lose her all over again. He had to tell her how he felt, that he forgave her for the past and he wanted to move forward, together, even if it meant supporting her as she chased tornadoes. He would swallow his fear and chase them with her, if only she'd have him. The black cell moved across the monitor, growing larger. Tanner opened a drawer and grabbed his keys. He couldn't sit here and do nothing while she dealt with the kind of pain that made her throw herself in the path of a literal force of nature. He would stand beside her this time and let her feel the pain instead of trying to make it go away. He wanted Lauren back. Tanner quickly shut down the computer and left the room, locking the door behind him. Outside, the sky was black, and rain poured from the clouds in buckets, nearly drowning out the wail of the tornado siren. Tanner fought his way to his truck, struggling to breathe as the wind whipped straight through him. Had Lauren made it to the vortex yet? Was she even now watching the funnel decimate the lands right outside Sunset Plains? Tanner gripped the steering wheel of his truck and headed west. The roads were empty, as anyone with half a brain was safely inside, ready to run to the storm shelter at a moment's notice. He should be inside, not chasing after Lauren. But he loved her. The past four years hadn't changed that, no matter how much her actions had hurt him. She needed a partner, not a knight in shining armor. This time, he wouldn't fail her. The pockmarked pavement transitioned into a muddy dirt road covered in divots filled with water. He bounced along the uneven terrain, not caring that the shocks in his truck were being destroyed as he forced the vehicle to go faster. He leaned over the steering wheel, peering up at the sky. A funnel was already forming in the nearly black clouds. Tanner pressed the gas, racing faster. The truck bumped over a ridge and back onto the paved road. Come on. Come on, come on, he muttered. What if he wasn't even on the right road? It wasn't like there were many out this way, but Lauren might have taken one of the dirt paths across private lands, or maybe the road that headed more southwest than strictly south. The wind howled, angry and fierce, whipping away the tornado siren. Tanner leaned forward again to see out the windshield and gasped. In mere moments, the funnel had gone from barely there to at least half a mile wide. It stretched toward the earth like a finger ready to flip the off switch on the entire town. The wind pushed his truck, and he struggled to hold on to the wheel as his tires spun on the wet asphalt. He rounded a bend in the road and screeched to a halt. A blue four-door sedan was parked in the middle of the road, the Tulsa One bumper sticker just visible through the rain. A tree jutted through the front windshield, its branches littering the ground, just like the way Lauren's parents had died. No, Tanner yelled, searching frantically for signs of the two women. He pounded a hand against the steering wheel and kept his foot pressed against the gas pedal. If she was in that car. There. Lauren leaned into the wind, her hair swirling around her head as dirt and debris whipped past. She clutched a microphone in her hand and her mouth moved as though she were talking. Shannon stood a few feet in front of Lauren, a camera propped on her shoulder as she filmed. Relief flowed through Tanner, and he sagged against the seat and drove toward them. She wasn't dead, even if her friend's car was. But they'd all be goners if they didn't get out of here soon. They could drive a few miles away. Then he would swallow his terror and let Lauren grieve through her work. Tanner pressed the gas pedal all the way to the floor and slammed on his brakes just before hitting Shannon's car. He pushed the door open, 
and the roar of wind and rain instantly filled his ears. The air was stolen from his lungs and he gasped, struggling to regain his ability to breathe in the face of such strong gusts. He pressed forward, each step taking monumental effort as he headed toward the women. The tree trunk rested on the hood of Shannon's car, and Tanner shook his head in disbelief. It had gone right through the center of the windshield, likely missing both women by mere inches. The funnel is at least half a mile wide, Lauren was saying into the camera. And as we saw mere moments ago, it obliterated an entire barn in less than three seconds. Shannon made a motion with her hand, then pulled the camera off her shoulder. We have to go. It's too close. No, Lauren said, clutching the microphone. We can film a little longer. Shannon shook her head. I'm not as hardcore as you, I guess. The footage is worth nothing to us if we're dead. Lauren, Tanner said. She glanced around before finally locating him, her eyes wide and disbelieving. What are you doing here? He stepped forward, fighting the wind until he could take her hand in his. I understand why you need this now. I'm finally listening instead of just hearing. If you need to chase storms to feel close to your parents, then I want to chase them with you. The wind let out another roar, and Lauren whipped around. The funnel touched down again, pulling an entire farmhouse off its foundation with one swoop. Tanner let out a yell. We have to go, Shannon yelled. There was another crack, and a tree flew past. Okay, Lauren said, her face white. Maybe if we go a few miles away, we can keep filming. Tanner wanted nothing more than to drive until they were at his parents' ranch, where they could safely wait this out in the storm cellar. But Lauren needed this. He hopped in the cab of his truck, and Lauren slid in beside him. Shannon was the last in and slammed the door shut. Lightning struck, and the earth seemed to vibrate with the force of the thunder. Tanner fumbled with the keys and cursed when he dropped them. He leaned down, frantically pawing the floorboard until his fingers brushed cool metal. He shoved the key in the ignition, and then they were racing down the blacktop. A fence flew across the road, and Tanner swerved, barely missing it. Shannon swore. It's gaining! And Tanner was going to have a heart attack, right here and now. Did Lauren seriously feel closer to her parents doing this sort of thing? But he didn't have to understand why it soothed her pain. He just had to accept her for who she was. A fence post appeared out of nowhere, striking the hood of the truck. Tanner let out a yell and swerved. The truck engine coughed and sputtered, then shut off. The truck lost speed hydroplaning on the wet pavement while Tanner struggled to maintain control. The women screamed as the truck fishtailed across the road. Tanner couldn't see anything. The fence post had penetrated the hood of the truck and stuck up at an odd angle, obstructing his view. Crap, Tanner yelled as the truck came to a stop. It's coming, Lauren said, pushing on Tanner's arm. Go, go, go. Tanner opened the door frantically scanning the horizon. Where? Lauren pointed at the ditch a few paces away. Large cement pipes, at least four feet wide, were just visible. An irrigation ditch. There, she said. Shannon sprinted across the road, camera in hand. Tanner grabbed Lauren's hand and pulled her after Shannon's longer stride. Hurry, Shannon called. Tanner looked behind him, letting out a yell. The tornado was right on their tail. Shannon dove into the pipe. Tanner pushed Lauren in, then crawled in right behind her, barely registering the sting as the rough cement scraped the palm of his hands. The pipe shook, rolling back and forth in the ditch, just enough to make crawling hard. They had both been so stubborn. And now he would die, without ever setting things right. Tanner threw himself over Lauren in a protective huddle the thunderous roar of the tornado drowning out the sound of her screams. The pipe shook, and Tanner squeezed his eyes shut tight, feeling the pull of the vortex. He clung to Lauren, praying they'd both make it out of this alive. I'm sorry, Lauren yelled, her mouth close to his ear. I shouldn't have given up on us. 
I loved you so much, but I didn't know how to make you understand what I needed. I know. He took her face in his hand, caressing her cheeks with his thumbs. I still love you, Lauren. I don't want to focus on the past anymore. All I want is you and a future together. Her laugh turned to a scream as the pipe rose an inch off the ground, then crashed back down with a bone-rattling crunch. Tanner yelled, pressing himself closer against Lauren. Her breath puffed against his cheek, shallow and fast. If this is how you need to grieve, that's okay, he said. In the future, I'd appreciate it if you didn't get quite so close to the storm, but I will do whatever necessary to help you through this. I'll be there for you the way I wasn't before. I don't need it anymore, Lauren said. Coming back to Sunset Plains made me realize that this town is what I need now. At your office today, all I wanted was to stay safe with you. But I thought it was crazy to give up a dream I've been chasing for so long. The pipe jumped again, and behind them, Shannon yelled. Shingles flew past the pipe opening, and Tanner heard what sounded like an entire roof crash into the ground. Lauren grabbed his face, forcing him to look at her. The memories in Sunset Plains aren't suffocating anymore. They're healing. I need this town to feel close to my parents, not some tornado. She let out a shallow laugh. I'm not feeling close to them at all right now. Just scared. Relief swept through him, and he leaned his head against her forehead, laughing. You have no idea how glad I am to hear you say that. I'm done running. All I need is you. I love you, Tanner. He hadn't heard those words in four years, and his entire soul sang with the beauty of them. I love you, too. Her eyes stared into his, wide and vulnerable, while the storm raged outside. Tanner brushed the hair out of her face, then leaned down, his lips hungrily claiming hers. Kissing Lauren was even better than he remembered it being. He could taste the grit of the storm on her lips and feel the desperation in her touch. She pressed herself against him, and he threaded his fingers through her soaking wet, dirt-caked hair. Dust and debris blew into the pipe, and he was vaguely aware of Shannon huddled at the other end. But none of that mattered anymore. I'm never letting you go again, Tanner said. Tears made muddy trails down Lauren's cheeks. I'm not going anywhere. The pipe seemed to rock back and forth forever, although logically, Tanner knew it had to be only minutes at most. But eventually, the pipe became still, and the wind died down to a dull roar. I think it's past, Shannon said. Holy crap, that was freaking insane. Yes, Tanner said, tucking a strand of hair behind Lauren's ear. It was. I'm going to check things out. Shannon said, crawling toward the pipe opening. Tanner rose up on his hands and knees, letting Lauren crawl out from underneath him. Holy crap, Shannon said again. That bad? Lauren asked, crawling faster. But whatever had happened out there, they were alive. Tanner could still feel Lauren's warm lips against his, a dream he thought he'd never experience again. He slowly rose to his feet wrapping Lauren's hand in his. The field looked like a war zone. A house had been dropped in the middle of it, the roof completely gone, and sides splitting apart. He hoped no one had been inside. A cow's legs were just visible from underneath a car. Tall grasses of the prairie had been cut down to stubs, and grass mingled with hay was strewn about the road. Whoa, Lauren said. Yeah. Tanner said, taking in a shaky breath. I can't believe it. We're alive. Lauren turned to Tanner, her eyes blazing. We're alive, he whispered, caressing her cheek. Chasing storms isn't worth losing you. She reached up, resting her hand on his. I don't need the adrenaline to feel close to my parents anymore, to feel alive. You make me feel alive, Tanner. You are enough. He rested his head against hers, 
closing his eyes as happiness flowed through him. They had a long way to go, but this seemed like a great beginning. And you're enough for me, Lauren, no matter how many storms you chase. I'm done trying to change you. I love you just the way you are. And then he kissed her. Epilogue. One year later. Lauren stood on the front porch of her home, watching the storm roll across the Sunset Plains prairie. Black cumulonimbus clouds billowed in the distance, perhaps three or four miles away, and she knew that soon the updraft would begin to create a funnel. She closed her eyes, imagining racing across the prairie with Shannon, a microphone in hand as the cameras rolled. Lauren could almost feel the wind stinging her cheeks as rain chilled her clear to the bone. The roar of thunder filled her eardrums until she could hear nothing else, and the pure thrill and terror of chasing a force of nature that might turn on her at any moment had her blood rushing in anticipation. For so long, she'd needed that adrenaline rush to feel alive, but not anymore. Three months ago, she and Tanner had stood before a pastor and promised to love each other for the rest of their lives. The church had overflowed with friends and family, and many of the old-timers had reminisced about attending Lawrence's parents' wedding at the exact same church nearly 30 years ago. That had been a thousand times more fulfilling than any storm. Lauren had a feeling this next adventure would top even that. Arms slipped around her waist and Lauren leaned back, nestling against Tanner's chest. He let out a deep, contented sigh, tightening his grip. She inhaled deeply, loving the way the scent of rain mixed with Tanner's cologne. Missing your old life, Tanner whispered. He brushed her hair aside, his lips caressing her neck in a soft kiss that made her shiver. Lauren spun in his arms, rising on tiptoes to kiss his lips. My old life didn't have you. His mouth quirked up in a smile. I don't expect to compare with a tornado. Or have you forgotten that I've been caught in the middle of one, too? You're better than a tornado. Predictable, dependable, steady. Aren't those all just synonyms for boring? Hardly. A tornado can't do this. She wrapped her arms around his neck, pressing closer. Or this. She brushed her lips against his again. Mmm, he murmured, pulling her in for a longer, more satisfying kiss. No, it can't. So, are you missing your parents? Always. But I don't need the adrenaline to feel close to them anymore. It filled a hole in my heart that isn't there now. All I need is you. Try telling that to Shannon. Lauren laughed. I think she's okay now. Shannon hadn't been thrilled when Lauren admitted she wanted to report on the weather from the studio instead of the field. Lauren had told Doyle she wasn't interested in the roving reporter spot, and Shannon had grudgingly done the same. She said working human interest pieces with Lauren was better than teaming up with some obnoxious roving reporter. Not long after taking their names out of the running, one of the weather reporters had quit unexpectedly, and Doyle had offered Lauren the spot. He'd said her dedication to her job and meteorology degree made her perfect for the position. Lauren refused to come without Shannon, and to her surprise, Doyle agreed. Shannon's eyes had grown wide at the pay increase, and she hadn't complained about giving up on the roving reporter spot since. Tornadoes were an adventure for you, Tanner said. Being married to you is an adventure. Not the same. Lauren laughed. She tugged Tanner down onto the porch swing and nestled against him, setting the swing into motion with one foot. I'll watch the storm from here, she said. I'm nice and warm, my hair isn't filled with mud, and I can go inside and mix up a pitcher of sweet tea whenever I want. That does sound nice. How was your day off? She held back a grin. Good. I had an appointment at the doctor's, then went to the cemetery and spent a few hours talking to my parents. The doctor's? Just a checkup. Oh. 
Tanner pushed his glasses up his nose. The action still managed to make her heart melt, even after a year together. What did you talk to your parents about? The new adventure we'll be embarking on. Tanner raised an eyebrow. Oh, yeah? And just what adventure is that? Happiness bubbled up inside her, and she couldn't stop smiling. Lauren gently took Tanner's hand and rested it on her stomach. His eyes grew wide, and he stared at her, eyebrows raised in question. I was thinking Vortex might make a good name, Lauren said, her tone teasing. But I'm open to suggestions. Tears filled Tanner's eyes. A baby, he whispered. A baby. He laughed, spreading his hand over her stomach. I'm going to be a daddy. He rested his forehead against hers. I love you so much, Lauren. She laughed, wiping a tear off his cheek. I love you too. This will be our best adventure yet, better than any tornado you've ever chased. Of that, I have no doubt, Lauren said, and then she kissed him. Lightning pierced the sky, and Lauren leaned against Tanner with a contented sigh. This right here was better than any mesocyclone could ever hope to be. She was home to stay. This has been Twisters and Textbooks, Sunset Plains Romance, Book Two. Written by Lindsay Armstrong. Narrated by Stacy Glomboski. Copyright 2016 by Lindsay Armstrong. Production copyright 2017 by Lindsay Armstrong. It's Lindsay Armstrong again. Thank you so much for listening to this audiobook. I really hope you enjoyed it. I've got more than 20 books published, and I hope to make more of them available on YouTube soon. You can help make this happen by liking this video and subscribing to my channel. If you want to check out more of my books, you can head over to my website, lindsayarmstrong.com, and join my newsletter. I'll send three free ebooks to your inbox immediately. You can also find my books on Amazon, Apple, Kobo, Nook, and Google Play, pretty much wherever ebooks are sold. I'll drop the links below so you can check it out if you're interested. Thanks for listening! <laughs>